Schnim, schnism, schnism. I'm half expecting to start it up and the whole PC will explode. <laughs> Not I was, yet. I was, hoping to get, I was hoping to get it possible that I could stream a new rig, but I don't think I'm going to be able to mm -hmm. do it in time. Which isn't a bad thing, you know. I'm sure this PC is like, can I see Ragnarok? And I'm like, hmm. No. <laughs> no. That would be me. <laughs> All right. Boom, boom. Everything's working except for the fact we're not public yet. Now we are. Oh, my God. No, oh, public. Bum, public bum, humiliation. Bum. It's been neat. I, I, I caught up on the VODs for um for Fringy and uh, oh. just as the Valerie's he... uh, crashed through oh, to Tia's temple, he's about to learn. You can flip it, you know. He's at that point. Oh, okay. Um, it's almost and, yeah, done. And as he was ending his stream, he was like, "You know what? I'm just having a really good time. I really like this game." I was like, oh, good. Yeah, that is good. Would have accepted any other way. There you go. What is that yeah. thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This will make a Ridley for you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it before. It's great. <laughs> so, hello there, Good chat. Shit. Today we are we are me and Metal. Since we're the oh. only we're the only chads in the EFAPOSphere that recently you, played you. through. God of War Juan, Hu, Three, and four, four. I guess we're calling it. Yeah. Even though Ascension is is Ascension technically considered four, is it not? I I guess it would be, but it's they just prequel, call it Ascension. Right? Yeah, so... everyone calls it Ascension. Nobody wants to call it four. No. So I don't. Know. But um, yeah, you guys may have noticed we've been streaming those, and we thought since God of War Ragnarok literally releases in three hours and forty minutes. <laughs> but uh yeah and some people have already said like why aren't you why aren't you streaming it it's out and i was like i don't fucking have it what do you mean <laughs> I'm, yeah I mean... i'm i am a british peasant person who doesn't get to have review copies of shit all right yeah. i don't know how it works me and mel gotta wait like everybody else and you know what that gives us more time to talk about some other stuff like yeah god of god of god of one one of war god of one Bo no. boy yeah, we thought we'd just have a little retrospective, a little chat about these games. Um, as you can see in the background, this will be the footage. It'll be my playthroughs of these games um, to act as a visual, so you guys know what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah. We'll start with good old God of War 1, a video game that came out uh, at a particular year, and it was created <laughs> by a company. Well, I'm, that's I'm covered. That's going covered very detailed one. today. That's the idea. <laughs> so, um, I guess, yeah, the idea here will be we talk about, I don't know, maybe maybe a little bit of what we thought of it once upon a time and then what we thought on a recent playthrough. I mm. always thought God of War 1 was the clunky beginner to the, to the series. However, it was good enough, certainly, to launch it. Because um, I remember loving the fuck out of this game when I first played it. Um, oh, Absolutely. Did you, what was, I forget, because I know I've asked you this before, but like you with God of War, you uh, got started with it, you just played them as they came out, I assume? Uh, I think I could, I think I played them when they came out. I definitely played them pretty early. I played them on the PlayStation 2, for sure. Uh, at some point I got the, the collector thingy on the PS2. It was like a, like a little box that had both of the games in it for PS2 that I got at some point. I think I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, that I don't know where that is. It might still be somewhere in my dad's garage. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I played them pretty early on. Not too long after they released, I would, I would guess. Because I, I was a big old PS2 boy back in the day. And I, yeah, I played the fuck out of it. I loved it. Yeah, because um, I, I think I mentioned on my God of War 1 stream, but I, I didn't care about it at all. And then a friend was like, you've got like no PS2 games and an old pre-owned... PS2 and you this the funny thing with me was um I was on GameCube for so long like yeah. well into the PS2's lifetime uh sorry PS3's lifetime and I remember a friend being like if you're gonna sit on that generation can you at least play some PS2 games as well and I was like oh, okay 
And he was <laughs> like, okay. play God of War. And I was like, what is even God of War? And, <clears throat> and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a very specific kind of experience. It is a crazy game where everything is exaggerated and bizarre and, and nuts, but also lots of references to Greek stuff, which when you live in the Western world, you, you get references to that every once in a while, and so you start recognizing things. Like the Hydra. It's like, I know that. Meh. Zeus, Ares, and, and gods of stuff. You're like, I know that. And then you're like, Kratos, and you're like, I don't know that. What's that? Yeah, the it was crazy that guy. man who kills everybody, and you're like, oh. And um, yeah, you get the the way this the game structured. It's like the 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 tutorial almost for the game is all the stuff on the ships and the. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, that's where it's layered. And then you move that's to where you, where you get your your first magic ability as well, and then you get to check that shit out. Uh, yeah, it gives you a little overview of what's going on. And yeah, everything, especially on replay, it's like, everything is very, uh, it's all there, it's just all so young, and first versions and stuff. Yeah. There's, there's clunk, there's <clears throat> frustrations, and uh, to be fair, a lot of people were like, well, how much of that is the emulator, because I was playing on it, and pretty sure the emulator is pretty good, like, in terms of, it's it's almost one-to-one -one with the game, except the, I had, like, a block of visuals dulled out, because uh, some weird shit going on, but I've rectified yeah. that since. What I mean by that is I did the same thing Metal did. I now have all God of War games in physical copies. So Yeah, I might I might us both buy one that was basically a waste of money, <laughs> but <laughs> We don't talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about it because I think it's a very funny story. This is, yeah, like that's the, true. Uh, that's like the prime example of being excited. Yeah. So I was just like looking for stuff so like I want to get the PSP games uh, as physical copies because I probably won't even play them anytime soon. But I like this franchise so much. It's my favorite favorite game franchise. I was like, I want to own them all in, in in physical form, so I can play them whenever I want. And I was looking around, I was like, oh, what kind of collections is out there? It's like, ooh, let's see. Do 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 do. It's like, ooh, God of War Saga. And I randomly found that because I I was watching a video about God of War. I don't even know what it was about anymore. Uh, but I was like. They mentioned the God of War saga. It's like, this is all five games. I was like, what? That shit exists? I need to find that right away. Yeah, which right sounded away. amazing. Because I was like, oh my god, yes. They need to make a God of War one disc every game. Do it. Yeah. And then I found one uh, on Amazon. Uh, obviously not new, but it doesn't matter. It's like, fuck yeah, I've got to get that. And then I ordered it, and then I streamed more God of War. It's like, hey, I got this thing. And that that's for the first time where someone mentioned, like, oh, those PSP games, those are codes, though. And I was like, oh... Well, it didn't say anything about not being available, those codes, so oh, maybe I'm lucky. Well, yeah, you can always maybe get it on PSP, uh, which, you know, we all we yeah. all play PSP these days, yep. They have. I actually have Chains of Olympus on PSP still. I have that copy with the UMD and <clears throat> everything. Oh, UMDs. Uh, I had so many of them. <laughs> Good times. Uh... So yeah, for me, there was not even a leaflet in there with codes. So I was like, okay, yeah, I could have, sure, if I would have known, I would have expected that. Fair enough. But yeah, the, but I was so excited I found that. I immediately talked, talked mutually, told mutually, but I was like, hey, you need to, you probably want that. And it's like, yeah. And then we both ordered it and we both didn't get any keys <laughs> for the <laughs> PSP games. I have, uh, I think, three versions of God of War 3 now. I was just like, well, I have two. Why not? Uh, well, I have two the two remastered versions of God of War 1 and 2 now, because uh, I have them digitally on my PS3, but now I also have them physically, which apparently I don't have anymore, because I don't know where that went. Um, but yeah, that was fun. And then I ordered another collector's edition that is, only has the PSP versions on them, and that came through and works perfectly. But just like the collector's edition volume 2 or something. Uh, yeah. And I also got Ascension in the Steelbook. And I don't think that game was very popular because that was the cheapest one of the bunch. It was like 20 bucks. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I remember Ascension being a game that, like, it squeaked out. I barely knew it existed. And then I remember yeah. reading about it and people were annoyed with it for different reasons. And I remember being like, I'll check it out at some point. Never did. Yeah, same. I checked it out on my last uh, all the way playthrough of all the games, which was like legit all of them. I played the PSP ones on on PS Now, which was a horrible experience. 
don't ever use PS Now or PS Remote or whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> it's so bad. It's I so am... laggy, even with good internet, it was painful. I, I, I think something must have gone wrong with the marketing or something, because I remember that the hype was unreal for God of War 3, and yet Ascension... Mm -hmm. Like I said, I barely even heard about it. But then God of War 2018, the hype was unreal for that as well. So it's just like, what happened? What what was the middle bit there? What did you what do you guys do? Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. But if hey, you I, remember, I I rage quit Ascension because I of do the trial remember, of yeah. Archimedes, which I deem to be a very unfun challenge. Uh, <laughs> I deem it unfun. <laughs> yeah, it's super long. Takes forever to kill things, and when you die, you go all the way back to the beginning. And even with the thing where it cheesed some other segments, where you just kind of stunlocked the enemies, it still didn't work. Uh, and I was so annoyed, I was like, I'm not, I don't want to play this again, ever. <laughs> and I haven't touched it since. Uh, but I got Ascension now, my ego wants to finish it. So uh, someday in the, in the coming months, I will probably revisit the boy and oh, I wouldn't give myself mind some redemption. When God of War 2020 seven or whatever the fuck comes out <laughs> i wouldn't mind going through the the the, the actual full <clears throat> saga i saw some people being like you said you go through all of them and i was like god of one two three that's what i said i would do i didn't go through <laughs> every single god of war I, was, I didn't even have them though i guess i could have emulated the psp ones that, that makes sense yeah um, but yeah I, at least i can do that next time it'd be weird to play ascension it'd be weird to play a god of war game that's brand new but then again we're doing that tomorrow so that's yeah. something that I should probably answer. We're going to say this so many fucking times tonight, probably. So people are like, so why aren't you streaming it now? When are you going to stream it? It's like, so I'm going to get access to it in three and a half hours. Two and a half hours, sorry. Um, yeah. And I get access as soon as the delivery man arrives. <laughs> and, and gives so me my physical copy of the game. The plan for the <clears> both <throat> of us, more than likely, is to... Like, I would probably start streaming it in 18 plus hours from now. That's when you will see me playing... Ragnarok. I actually wanted to stream one more for 2018 because I uh, there was one more thing I wanted to do in it that I think could have taken about an hour or so, but I've ran mm -hmm. out of time, everybody. So we're going to be moving on to Raggers. It'll be lots of fun. I expect yeah. uh, a Chungus stream. I don't know if that means five hours plus, but it, it very well might be. Uh, well, I'm going I'm going to be heading for some lunch with, uh, with a friendo because it's his birthday somewhere in the afternoon and then i guess i'll be back at like 6 p.m that's when i'm i'm gonna start and i'm just gonna start as long as i can because unfortunately i have to work the next day so i can't just do a big chunky stream because this is one of those streams that could easily be in like be like a 12 hour stream if i would have a day off the next day <laughs> because i see myself wasting a lot of time i'm so awkward too because i got friday got a friday night tights talking about black panther and then saturday i got efap so. Well, you made me now watch it too, so I'm wasting precious Ragnarok time to watch Black Panther. Yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to fill <laughs> Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, I don't think I'll be able to do much at all. So, uh, and then Saturday, nope, I won't be able to do any of that. And so it'll be Sunday. Will be the next time I stream Ragnarok. Then, oh, that's annoying. I like going. I like going absolute ham on my video games. Yeah, this isn't same. ham. This is like beef. It's been really weird the last two days because my, my, my last three days before that was basically, I'm going to get up and play God of War. <laughs> it's like the last couple of weeks. If I'm not doing a Forge or anything, it's just, I'm going to play any God of War now. And like yesterday and today, it's like, I'm not playing any game. I tried to play something. I was like, I don't feel like playing anything else. I just want Ragnarok now. <laughs> I don't want yeah, to play anything yeah. else. <laughs> One of those, like, it's about time, right? We've, we've paid yeah. our dues of, of prepare, preparation. But, I mean, uh, I did a actually... fucking nine-hour God of War 2018 stream two days ago to get back on track because <laughs> Dude, I, I had to coo because of the coof. I was like, shit, I need to fucking go. <laughs> and then I did a nine-hour stream. It's like, I'm good. I was looking <clears> at my past broadcast and I was like, I was like three hour, four hour, three hour, two and a half, three hour for, for God of War 2018. And then suddenly I fucking like eight and a half. And I was like, what the hell? Why even <laughs> happened that day? And it was when I was, uh, it's the first time I did Niflheim. And I remember uh, because it was like new, challenging, arcadey, and uh, there was like goals. I remember like when I'd finally finished my main intentions with Niflheim, I was like, well, that was good. That was kind of fun. I, I guess I'll move on to the Valkyries. And it's like, dude, I was there for like three hours. Holy shit. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah, I did those uh, things last my my last playthrough. 
that all the Mus- Muspelheim and Niflheim stuff. It's fun stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. And I will say, uh, I, I, I just like, it's just a, a truth, and I think this applies to both of us. Big old, big old God of War fan. Just am. Just yeah. super passionate about it. Which is oh, funny, because I haven't played I mean, two I of the, the games buffering. in the series. I think oh, we're we, fleeming. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it, so we, we can just carry on. <laughs> the, the, okay. There will be an uploaded <laughs> vision of this that won't have that problem. The fucking dude is... there he just he sees that he's there he just like fucking tosses him off the edge yeah uh, the boatman yeah Coral which boatman. uh feels like something that 2018 creators would not do um and there's there's a no no it feels like that's that's uh that's part of the difference kratos is kind of just an asshole in the uh the first three games but he's like gradually coming around i think he's uh he's lost a lot of faith in shall we say just uh, existence. He's kind of like this. This whole thing has been shit. After what happened to his, um, because uh, you know, he, he, part of how he manages to kill his uh, his family is the fact that he's just dominating. He's having loads of fun, being incredibly powerful. Yeah, but I think it's really yeah. important to remember as well because it, it gets played into quite a bit for uh, Atreus's yeah. characterization. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Well, yeah, don't worry, guys. Back. All the stuff that me and Mel just said is saved, and it'll be on the re-upload. So, yeah, uh, don't it was worry. a long F, for sure. That was a long F. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> Athena PC, you conspire <laughs> against me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, that, that, that's the plot line. You move through Athens until... It, it's kind of the geography of this fucking world is insane. You move through Athens to the desert where Pandora's box is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, that's that's that? It's like, okay. It's, kinda also, it's also like it's missing like a hub world in the middle. 
Yeah, you know like I mean? a, I'm not sure what their plans were exactly of how this world was going to come mm. together, but they were just like, fuck it, you go into the desert next. And uh, that's how and I remember the, God of War 1, is the, it's Pandora's Temple. That's how I remember the, the campaign, because that's where you spend like 60% of it. Yeah, Pandora's Temple takes a while. It's a, it's a big, big boy. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really weird, because you go to the right, and it's like, there's the desert. It's like, oh, okay. And I think in the cutscene, they even make it out to be like really big. Like you were spending a while getting to the, where you are. Where for you, it's just like you walk through this big door and then you're there. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, oh, it's all, it seems is... all quite tight together. together. This is what I was looking for. <clears> when uh, you fight some ogres in this area, there's just civilians running around and you can kill them for health. And it's like, yeah, this is kind of, I wouldn't even refer to this as lunar narrative dissonance. Uh, normally, I would. But in this game, I, I can kind of believe Kratos wouldn't give a fuck. Oh yeah, he's, he doesn't give a shit. I don't think he gives a shit at that point. Yeah, he'd be like, get out of my way. Like, <laughs> I have important work to do. Fuck you guys. You know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, one of my favorite parts of all of my playthrough is that you have... This would be considered lunar narrative dissonance. You have Athena telling <laughs> you, please rescue my city from these, like, these horrible monsters, all of this horror that Ares <laughs> is doing. You're like, okay. And you start just fucking pillaging while you're running through. You steal people's money, you, you wreck their houses and stuff. You're just <laughs> yeah. doing that, fuck it, whatever, I need to unlock stuff. And it's like, I can picture Athena watching you be like, oh, okay, that's something, okay, I guess you, you need to do that. He's gonna start saving them anytime now. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be great. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you're just like, yeah, you know, fuck it, whatever. And then you start this part, and uh, obviously the rage mechanic has uh, been well introduced at this point, and... Um, well, I think it's after I've killed the the ogres and I'm just sort of fucking around and I'm grabbing the civilians for health every once in a while and uh, one of them I kill fully charges the rage beater and so I, I kill this civilian, they're screaming, I throw their body, then Athena goes, the, let the rage of Sparta be with <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what the fuck, Athena? Like, granting uh, me this awesome power because I execute your civilians. <laughs> Oh, we don't like them. We don't like them. The thing, if you populate your world with those innocent people that are easy to kill and give you health, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> a little too tempting. Because, yeah, I remember this part. The health is so good, and the civilians are just everywhere, that it's like, these ogres were never going to kill me. It was never going to happen. No, you can get... A... It feels like they spawn unlimited for a while. Um, the civilians. I'm not sure. I have nothing I to so. prove be. that, but it feels like they don't get less until you beat all the, the all the ogres. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It's probably worth mentioning. Me and Mel. I'm assuming you're the same anyway. The, but I went with hard on every uh, God of War one, two, three, and four. Yes. 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 Um, hard being the third of four <clears throat> difficulties. Let's see if we can put it that way. The thing is, I only started with those like halfway through October. So it's like, I, I might have gone with the hardest one if I would have had more time. But I, I played the first three Silent Hills before that for Spooky Month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw you play God of War and I was like, fuck, now I want to play them too. <laughs> Even though I said I'm not going to go through all of them again. I did. I did. And oh, I you know what? I think I might actually have the moment it. here. See, my rage is almost full. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, where's the civilian? Give me one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, man, look at this dude. Sorry, buddy. Use you for your health. Even though... Let the rage of the gods drive your blades, Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> Let the rage of the gods guide your blade. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, I was already noticing it, though, uh, when I was just playing this section. The grabbing, uh, when, when the Cyclopses or, or whatever those were, uh, when they're, like... Uh, dazed and confused, you can sort of hit circle, and then you'll you'll throw your little knife at them, and you can ram their head into the ground, sort mm -hmm. of thing. And you see me try it like three times. The animation does play, but it doesn't connect. And uh, there's a lot of that in God of War One. Grabs just don't connect. They've gotten better. I feel that it got a little <laughs> bit better, but I still died because of that. Even in three, yeah, we tried to grab the one that's glowing with the circle, mm -hmm. and then you start grabbing at the guy, but nothing happens. It's like, cool, one, fail, two, fail. Okay, now I lost half my health. Okay, now just kill me, because I don't accept that health loss. 
oh yeah, sometimes you got to do that. I do that out of principle sometimes. Like you've hit me to the point where I refuse to play. No, <laughs> I am not comfortable. Um, but yeah, so you because um, you know I'm trying to sort of cycle through this in some level of speed, but feel free to highlight anything yeah. you want as we go. But yeah, so you eventually get to the good old Pandora's Temple, and you, the whole thing there is to just solve a series of crazy uh, puzzles to um, get access to the box. Yeah, and then... this is all on Cronus's back, by the way. Mm -hmm. The Titan Kronos. Yeah, uh, which uh, it was an interesting choice for what they were going to make this game about. That's what they went with. Yeah, because uh, for the location, that's the main. Like I said, the main place you you spend your time uh, in. And uh, Kronos is a is a weird one, a mm -hmm. weird character in this uh, in, in the, the trilogy. Series. Yeah, because uh, in this one, you just you just kind of on his back. He's not even really a character, if I recall correctly. Then in the second one, he's like, oh, hey, we're buddies now. I here have my powers. It's like, okay, cool, thanks. Yes. <laughs> and then the third one, he suddenly hates you. It's like, did I call you bastard? It's like, well, but I thought we, we, okay. And he hates you specifically because you took Pandora's box. That's what he says. He got, he got punished for that. Also, what you did to Gaia. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, well, I mean, Gaia, this, yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. And uh, it makes you wonder if it was just a... Um, I don't know, a recording he left you in, in, in God of mm -hmm. War 2. It wasn't actually him up to date, you know. But yeah, uh, this... Gosh, look at the floor. Oh, there's no floor. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? Um, yeah, uh, I think the, the, there's, a, there's a definitely a fuddy to this game in that uh, when you get the Adora's box after everything, you just get hit by like a pillar from... Literal yeah, miles just away. Throws it across the across the map. And I was like, wow, why did you wait so long to do that? You could have just killed me this whole time. <laughs> it's one of those uh you, you get a realization every once in a while of the God of War games where you're just like, wow, anything can happen at any time. It doesn't Yeah. This, these games are... Oh shit, I forgot about this guy. He was my favorite. Oh, look at the Minotaur, he sucks dick, dude. Yeah, he's probably my most hated uh... boss, at least in God of War One. What I learned in this playthrough that I did, don't fight him down there. Just no, fight yeah, him on the platform. The same thing for me. Uh, it's so it's not even comparable. It's so much easier. It's, it's so, insane. Th so this is the conclusion so I had. It was so weird. There's more mechanics at play at the bottom end. Yeah. Why did they design this this way? <laughs> like, I do not know. He, but this he's boss... a pushover when you pull, pull him to the top. Yeah, you, you can kind of just hug the right, I think. Until he does tries to do the grab move, then you go left, and then you go just back to the right, and then you can just basically dodge anything. Because I was like under the impression, with how games tend to work, that you might get like a, a good hit or two at first, but he's eventually gonna like you know fuck you over by keeping you up there. You you yeah, you want to bring him down? He grabs you. It deals like no damage, even on hard. Yeah, no, it's I like, okay. I'm just gonna go back up. Thank you. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, when I think I entertained the idea of like, okay, I'll see what happens if we just keep him up there, and then it was just like, this is fucking a pushover now. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, which annoyed me because I wanted to try and beat him on the on the lower end, but that was just beyond fucking frustrating. I'd lose my yeah. mind with it. Um, just brought back all the memories from the last time I fought him because I I struggled with him as well, and then I was like, oh, he's easy up here. I'm just gonna do it up here. I did I did it multiple times down there before. I'm good. I <laughs> figured this one out. I'm good. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was here for a while. <laughs> this one's why this uh, became a lot longer as a playthrough, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, then um, I, I think we may as well just move over to the end game. Uh, being the... God, that... that, that it's funny, because it's God of War 1. It's like, I don't want to shit on it too much, okay? Because I really like it, but... Holy shit, well, you get then maybe they should have designed the fucking end <laughs> differently or just cut it out. Imagine I don't think I've, I haven't been that angry at a game in a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think I was that angry last time I played it. I don't know why they did it differently, but I think it took me longer this time. This shit's and, annoying enough in the underworld. This part it, of just Oh yeah, yeah. And what the person designing this shit, why? Like, all I, of it. I don't know. Why? I don't know. Why did you do this? There was something I would um, accidentally <clears throat> did at one point. Some people in chat will remember. But um, there was, like, a direction I go forward, 
or left. Forward was like the the secret. Left was the proper way. I went mm -hmm. a little bit forward, uh, and then I was like, oh, I don't know if that's a secret or not. And I went the other way. I had procced yeah. the checkpoint on both of them. So now that meant I had to do all of both sections without failing in order to... Yay! So I was just like, so that's awful. Someone in chat just said, it's old. You know, there's a lot of old games out there that are really fucking good. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Also, this game can't get away with that because loads of it is good. Oh yeah, this is good. combat I, is great. Yeah. Mimic is real fun. Uh, the puzzles are pretty adequate. It's hell, so... what did you expect? Dude, hell in 2018 is awesome. Oh, I don't know. I think I think you could have made hell amazing, but yeah, it's funny because I'm targeting this this part, which is annoying enough, right? But I have to get to the the part okay, that everyone talks about around you somewhere. Because yeah, oh, here she is. Oh, the pillars. Oh, fuck me. I said to the stream at the time of playing this that I was like, I don't know what it is because I'm not going to be stuck on this for as long as other parts, and I know that I can do it. But this is infuriating me quicker than anything ever. Like, it's just, it gets to my soul so quickly, this fucking part, in terms of how much it annoys the hell out of me. Well, it's, it, takes, it takes a while to get up these things. Then as soon as you get hit by something, you fall all the way back down off that pillar. Yeah. The hitboxes on that blade, on those blades, are fucking trash. I remember when I did it, I didn't know how I'd managed to get through. Like, I've already passed through several there that I didn't think I would. Yeah. And then oh, you have to that's... reset. And then it takes away a pretty significant chunk of, of health as well. So if you get hit often enough, you just want to kill yourself anyway. Yeah. To reset your health. And it's just it's just a thing of annoying where you're just like, I don't want to do this. This is uh yeah, it's like one of those remembered parts of God of War one. <laughs> like everybody talks about how much <laughs> they fucking hate that bit. Um and yeah, the person who designed it, uh, I'm sure they're happy with what they did, okay? They, they didn't make several enemies. Wasn't that David Je Jeff? Jeffy? Yeah, that's what a lot of people Jeff. are saying. Uh, yeah, the guy who complained about Metro Dread being poorly designed. What a joke. As it it really does feel like, it's like, you made that, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> like they yeah. Just, you put through so many people through so much pain. Yeah. As well as yeah. on screen, the, the update stuff. Takes a, a bit in this one, but they change it in the second one, uh, fortunately. Oh god, yeah, if you putting your blood points into th upgrades, it takes fucking forever in this game. If if you're yeah. ever in an awkward position of, like, upgrading it to fight a boss immediately, and it's not, like, it's after a checkpoint. Someone in chat was saying that happened to them on one of the higher upgrade ones, and it's just like, god. That's yeah. awful. Um, so anyway, yeah, you get through the underworld, then you go back up to, um... To Athens for a little while, and then you start playing the end game, which is quite oh. something, isn't it? God, that's what I was referring to earlier. That I haven't been so angry at a game for a while. You, you and I uh, approached this differently. Let's just put it that way, because your your first phase, I think you were trying to save your rage. I think I used it like immediately on my playthrough. Yeah, and it helped me get I tried through to this save part my, really quick. I tried to save my magic, at least on my second day of trying this because at some point i was just so angry and was later i was like i need to stop or i'm gonna get a heart attack <laughs> yeah well something that i think gave us both the edge we needed to complete it was knowing that uh you get infinite mana during rage that uh yeah that really that helps because the hades minions thing is like an excellent move it just costs so much mana yeah i think i ended up using uh chronos uh stuff Okay, dude, I just realized I'm fucking dominating him with Outrage, actually. Yeah, I remember watching you uh, doing this part of the fight. You, in, in the one where you finished it, I think, you absolutely demolished his first phase. He didn't even hit you once. Kind of crazy. Well, yeah. <laughs> so this is the phase that's, like, relatively chill. It's the, it's the this one. That his <laughs> damage is insane, though. The damage he deals I is guess fucking it, nuts. That's why I said relatively, because yeah. he... That part. It is a normal fighting phase where you use your weapons and you're against one enemy and you can concentrate on that. And then we get to this. This part. And Famous. Good God. I, I don't know what the fuck happened here. <laughs> I don't know how that went through anything. So I had a friend that I was talking to about how he had recently gone through, or at least within the year, I think, gone through all the God of War games. And he yeah. said, um, 
I, I was just like, oh, I'm at the fucking uh, the, the save your family part, and he was like, oh yeah, I love that bit, and I was like, what? He's like, oh, because what um, difficulty? He was, it was, <laughs> so he was talking about what it means story wise and how much you could draw out of it and how you know, like cool it is that he's sort of fighting off yeah. all of these angry Kratoses that you know blah, blah, blah. and I was like, what what difficulty did you play the game on? And he was like, oh, uh, I think I think the normal. And I was like, right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that probably normal, made it a little more tolerable. <laughs> I think on normal I didn't complain about this part, but it, when you play it on hard, oh. fucking imagine God of God of War mode or Titan, whatever oh. it's called in this. Jesus, that's what I was thinking the whole time. Like I don't know, the, you they deal a pretty significant amount of damage as well, uh, and they easily stun lock you. Uh, you basically have to get in a certain rhythm and kill as many as you can. Just do like I don't know, aim. The ground yeah. pound attack at the at the at your wife basically. Basically, yeah, yeah. Um, this and is a... for the best. But then, even then, sometimes at certain angles, some some of them just straight up ignore your ground pound attacks. Is what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make any rhyme or reason of it. Some of them had like a weird angle where for some reason the attack didn't reach. But sometimes you hit like five of them and only three went up, and the other one were like, nah, I'm, "I'm here now. Fuck you." It was uh. There was there was an element of luck, I think, for the victory on this one. You had some hideously bad luck. You you oh, yeah. you lost at like the final dude like three different times. Yeah, the fucker on the stone back there that shoots stuff. Fucking nuts. <laughs> I, I warned you about him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking hate the guy in the back. Why did they do that? That was so unnecessary. Just throwing a random Kratos in the background that tosses lightning yeah. or whatever. It's like why. Because you need, to, I think you need to kill a certain amount of them. Because I had one going back and forth, and there was one guy with a big sword keeps keeps spawning. I was like, okay, I guess I have to jump over there because I had no magic. And then I got that guy, but in the meantime, the guy with the sword killed the wife and family. It's like, god damn it. Yeah. I think the way I finally finished that part was just killing as many as I can with a ground attack onto the family. And then when I saw them getting overwhelmed, I just spammed the Cronus' rage. Went into Berserk mode, spammed it more, 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 more. And then it eventually Oh, dude, look at me getting chained out. by these fuckers. <laughs> That's the most infuriating fucking thing. Tag, 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 and you're spamming uh -huh. everything. You're like, I can't move. Yeah, uh, this this part is well known by every player of God of War One on hard difficulties. It is a is a thing you need to use everything you you know and have learned, and maybe even more than that to yeah. fucking your family can be at full HP and they can knock them down in seconds if you're away for too long. Which yeah, it's oh, it's annoying. Oh yeah, because I I think after I finished this, I, I was looking for speedruns for God of War One because I never seen one, which is interesting because I watched quite a bit of speedrunning back in the day. Uh huh. Uh, it was a pretty good video actually, uh, where someone just absolutely demolished a game who wasn't even like an active runner. He was just playing offline, and then at some point joined the community and was like, "Oh, I can do this like way faster." By the way, I was just challenging myself, and he was like, "I was a bit of a dick about it." But then he, he put out videos part by part where he showed what he found, and he just half the time of completion. It was actually nuts. Wow. And I was, because I was curious, how do speedrunners do this one? Like, they must have something. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's, a, <laughs> there's an infinite mana glitch all the way at the beginning that you can do. So, oh, yeah, that helps. Oh, that would, that would probably do it, yeah. That could probably <laughs> Until it's do it. done. <laughs> <laughs> I think the way is when you get Crotus' Rage, you can just kind of clip through. Uh, the top of it, it was like some kind of high jump, and then the game just thinks you're in uh, in that unlimited ma magic mode to test out your magic. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. So it just get it just gets constantly refilled all the time. Oh, dude! When you're at this part where a few of them are spawning, so you can just start using the grab, and it's like, <laughs> have I done it? Have I finally done it? Yeah, you have that fucker in the back. Who's yeah, he's still fucking around because yeah, you that's have to you have does. to kill him. Well, I guess you could you, you just grab, grab, grab until you have enough magic to just throw lightning at him. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to do is get Zeus's bolt. Smart, that's smart. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I remember being like, Jesus fucking Christ, finally. Oh no, he died at some point. Okay. And then you get you the just... final fight. 
uh, the hell yeah, found this wait. one either. <laughs> Here, take this weapon you've never used before. <laughs> and also, you don't have a proper health bar. You have to do like a duel where you have to. Yeah, it's like a tug of war. Know, you have to have the bar all the way. And in like two hits, you can get like half of it away from you on heart. It's. Oh. There's like a couple of times where it was almost done. And then just hits you a couple of times, like, well, that's a complete reset. Time to start over. Woohoo. Yeah, look at that. I just. I was getting close to winning there, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and reset. No, that's. Oh, it's. I was going to say, look at the timeline. It's like, yeah, uh, this is not my victory. So annoying. Run. Also, a strange choice for the God of War to have, like, spider legs coming out of the back of him. Or whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. He was like, ah. Oh. That's. Those spider legs, the range with the attacks he has. Yeah. That's, Oh, so many times. I think the hitbox is actually longer than the spider legs uh, sometimes. But yeah, uh, that was a big old tug of war. It's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the God of War one. It was uh, it was really fun and neat and cool. But man, yeah. has it is it's not it's not aging so great. To be fair, some of this stuff wasn't good at the time. I remember this being pissed at the time mm. anyway. Like, uh, everyone complained about the Underworld as the game came out. Um, yeah. But there's, there's clunk to movement, to combat, to the camera, to uh, the graphics, obviously. There's still... I remember this still being, like, visually impressive for the time, but it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, for sure. Um, but, like, a very respectful beginning to a, to a series. Yeah. Um, and but basically, the game ends with... Uh, you misunderstanding semantics. It's like, yeah, we forgive you your sins. We never said we're going to make you forget about them. And then you try, it's like, oh man, I have nothing else to lose. I'm just going to kill myself. And then Athena's like, uh, no, you're going to go to war now. Get wrecked. It's like, yeah, which, wow. uh, funnily enough, is like, Prick. you know what? Cool. Pricks. Like, I guess <laughs> Thank I'll you. be, because he seems to be like kind of happy about that. That uh, they imply that he's the god of war up until present day. Uh, yeah. of our world sort of thing and it's like oh okay and then yeah because like... you see all these scenes with uh, yeah. with World War 1 2 or whatever it's yeah like, we'll oh, have to like can... spec ops type people <clears throat> right right so it's um yeah it, 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 it's like a, that's it this one and done franchise be, be, be full and then it made loads of money mm -hmm. and they were like wait a minute it's got a war thing maybe we should make another one um, that was funny. I was trying to jump right into God of War Two from the end of my God of War One stream, and the emulator was like <laughs> fucking crapping out. But never managed to pull it off. But then I got everything fixed thanks to, and I think I mentioned it when I started up the advice of people on stream. Ooh, appreciate it. Uh, and the emulator was running better than better than ever. I think. Yeah, this one we open story wise with Kratos is drunk with power, and he's basically doing the shit that Ares was doing now. Um, yeah. Which has prompted the gods to want to try and stop him. Or at the very least, Athena. She opens with, uh... Sort of... Uh, she, she like, a lightning strikes him and reduces him from Godzilla-type kaiju man into normal man. And then yeah. she puts that power into this statue that comes alive and starts trying to kill you. And you're like, oh, okay. And then yeah, remember Zeus... how she said they can't attack each other? I, I guess that's... That, I, yeah. I, would, I would call that attack. <laughs> It feels, feels like, like uh, feels like God of War Two is like fuck that. <laughs> We're doing other yeah. stuff now. Oh yeah, do we mention casually by the way that fucking Kratos just escaped the underworld? That's just something you could do. Like you could be killed. Yeah, and you you're just so leave. angry. He was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna it's, go uh, back. It's so strange because <laughs> it's so like accepted by people who play it, including myself, by the way, that you get killed. You get your like torso is torn out by that thing that Ares does to you. And it's like, oh, I'm in the underworld now. And then it's like, yeah, yeah. you got to, you know, complete a few puzzler platformers, kill some enemies, and then you'll be back in the living world. It makes sense, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, I, th I, th I think Chains of Olympus happens before this one, if I'm not mistaken. I thought all uh, of the PSP ones which were prequels. Which is the one where you meet your brother, Demos. Uh-huh. And, uh... Yeah, I think the 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 gods took Demos from you for uh, towards Olympus and not you. Uh, 
and then you find him again because you thought he was dead but he's not really dead but then he dies at the end oh it's well, ghost of sparta sorry we yeah. would talk about those but i haven't played them so uh, it's that. been two years and i don't recall them that much but yeah this is the one where you meet your brother and i think you <sighs> oh sorry no i have played chains of olympus i didn't play ghost of sparta i kind of mixed those two up in their storylines because in one of them you actually meet your daughter again yeah you you, you kill persephone in, uh, in one of them right uh yeah yeah that's that's what uh, Hades references in God of War three then as well, and you decide not to stay with your daughter in Kate in in order to actually save the gods I think because someone is doing some shenanigans and then you do that and help Olympus I think, uh yeah, yeah people saying Persephone is Chains of Olympus I definitely played that one then yeah, but yeah I I I, I, I wanted to read out on them but I didn't have time unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. That's the. It's gonna be more interesting when we get get to three because we do the whole uh, the whole thing with uh, Pandora, mm -hmm. which he kind of sees like a daughter, which we kind of did already in uh, in that PSP one. Then where you already is like, okay, I need to uh, not chill with my daughter because I need to help here or something. Uh, I just want to mention one of them confirms Zeus is the grave digger. Isn't there Ascension that does that? Um, and it's because of it's literally like the fighting mode or something. You can choose the grave digger, and he has like an animation where he turns into Zeus. <laughs> I do not remember. I remember someone, someone might know. Someone said that somewhere in some YouTube short or whatever. That's how I uh, found out about it. But I remember the theories about the grave digger being Zeus or that. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's just the idea that Zeus is the one that facilitated Ares' downfall with Kratos, along with mm -hmm. Athena, more than likely. And then they both decided, fuck Kratos <laughs> in God of War 2. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the, the, the story again is getting weird, because uh, Kratos does get stabbed, he ends up in the underworld again, but then Gaia is like, nah. -uh. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually, it's even funnier than that, because you make your way towards uh, the city. Uh, Athena is trying to kill you, and then all of a sudden Zeus is like, hey, here, take the Blade of Olympus. It's really good. You only need to put your, all your power in it. And Kratos is like, okay. All right. <laughs> Why are you helping me, though? Uh, uh, here's the blade. And then he gets smooshed by the statue after he beats it by accident. Yeah, that Zeus... weakens him because he lost all his power, and then Zeus comes out and is like, "Thank you for your power," and then he stabs you. <laughs> it's a really weird beginning for the story. So this was uh, this was interesting. Um, a lot of people were like pointing out that Sparta, because Sparta gets destroyed by Zeus, right? Yeah. So is that still canon, or did we, with the time shenanigans, did that get undone? This this is the thing. The, the the whole time shenanigans doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> it's all full of time paradoxes. Because even if because when you when you get to the fates, you you only kill one of them. The other one just get trapped in another mirror. Basically, they can just go back to the temple of the fates and still stop you again. Well, yeah. Spoiler alert. That's going to be the big criticism of this game. Yeah. Um. But for now, yeah, we'll just say that. Zeus kills him. Gaia is like, nah, that's not happening. Then you yeah. ride a Pegasus to um, the. F <clears throat> you need to get to the Fates specifically so you yeah. can just alter fate. Which um, I know if the Fates are like a story that's been told, but like this is something you need to execute very carefully, and we'll, yeah, we'll we will stumble across <laughs> why very soon. Because the one thing that's going really well for this series right now isn't the plot. It's Kratos as a character. This 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 mm -hmm. guy who's so fucking angry, he won't die, and he's gonna kill everybody, and he gets to meet all these things that we recognize from Greek mythology and go to these cool worlds and do this fun combat. It's like, okay, that's all good. You still got all of that running pretty well functioning, and, um, yeah, you, you, the, the, t the fate, the temple of the fates is essentially, it's, it's the, that's the whole game, is basically going through this giant series of puzzles and combat to get to the fates, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's the same as God of War 1 again, but everything is uh, refined. Everything is smoother. Yeah, everything um, looks a bit nicer. The combat is a bit smoother. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's basically a strict, listen to the. It feels upgrade. like they just 
listened to the feedback yes. of the first game and improved upon basically everything. Um, like, I don't know that there's anything I think is better in God of War 1 than 2. I couldn't tell you anything. Uh, uh, I think a... it's just straight up all improved. And it's no wonder to me that God of War 2 has a huge level of respect from fans, because it's just like, <clears throat> this is just, this is how games often are supposed to go. Like, you like that first thing, we'll give you more of it, and we'll change up a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, continue the story, quote-unquote, but we're mainly just trying to get you to have the same fun you had, but uh, also change it up according to what you want. Um, improved other than story? That's a... Actually, a good point. The story probably is better in God of War 1. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I thought that was a given, to be honest. That's, That's why I didn't mention it. I was just... Well, the thing I is... I was only both, playing about gameplay here, yeah. They're both not exactly great, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 they aren't. But yeah, no, um... <clears throat> obviously looking for highlights as well as we go through, but... I mainly want to get to that, that part, so I want to talk about it, because it's super important for story. But, um, first of all, I think it's hilarious that when you come across the fates, that one of them... Is, uh, is in the kill me room. I, it's so funny. Uh, I've, I've been looking to see if there's any context for why that could make any sense at all. That uh, one of them just lives in a room that's solely designed to kill her. Like, what, what is the point of you all mean, of it? You mean the last one? The one you kill? The big chungus one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, why is there, like, blades, uh, pendulum blades just around? It's such a weird room. I'm trying to find it. Oh, wait. I think I skipped over it. Is it or is it before this? Oh, it's definitely after the... The Kraken fight wasn't very good. I remember being disappointed uh, about that. Oh, yeah. You kind of just have to stun him, then do the things, and then you're done. It's like, yeah. 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 Um, is it... Oh, is it after... Is, is she the last of the fates you fight? Uh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, the Chungus one is the, is, the, is the very last one of the Fates you fight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she is, so, yeah. This this whole room was kind of funny to me, because it's just, it's just... Everything you're completing... I don't understand this at all. Like, uh, it, it's all... Mechanically, it's all perfectly normal. It's all gamey game. Yeah, but, but um, why is this here this way? It's really weird. Yeah, she's this giant, fat, long thing. And uh, <laughs> all these devices and contraptions, they're, like, solely... Uh, used by you to just facilitate her death. Very, very odd. Um, but all right, yeah, we'll roll it back a bit and go to the um the other two fates you fight. Mm -hmm. the, the The fight ends with you locking them behind um the, one of the mirrors, the last mirror that's uh the middle one. Yeah, and then you smash them. The implication being they can't get it. back to this time. They are trapped now in in wherever they were, and it's like okay, but wherever they are has a them. There and a functioning series of mirrors, I assume. Yeah, so, so they I, can probably still come back if they wanted to. Presumably, but this is the thing: uh, because you're fucking with time so much, I have no idea what any of this really means for anything, anyone, anywhere at yeah. all. Um, and it's really hard for me to believe that these guys would be beaten by you because they can look into the future. Fate. <laughs> yeah. Presumably, they decided. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight, fight you instead of using all the abilities I have to not do that. Yeah, um... So, I almost want to skip to it, because, like, those are, those are problems. We could dig into more of them, but let's just highlight to the, the main one. For those who don't know, Kratos is like, aha, now I have the, the thing I, I very much want. I can go back in time and try and stop the, the particular events from happening. And it's like, wait, why don't I just go back in time and grab the Titans... From the big old Titan War, and then mm. drag them presumably to present time. Yeah, yeah, it is present Somehow time. Somehow does that, and then uh, we can we can all attack Mount Olympus. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, all right, let's do it. That'll be the thing to do. Because uh, the f sorry, that's the second thing he does. Like, where does he travel the first time? Oh, like, just, so oh it's he to goes when to Zeus is killing him. Yeah, yeah. So technically, there's two <clears throat> Kratos here. One that has been stabbed, who I guess is, went to hell. <laughs> it's uh, just, yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that. Because we, we have the prime, prime, let's call it the prime timeline. Oh and then he God. goes back in time to attack Zeus here, and you have your big old boss fight. 
and as, as you just highlighted, there was a second Kratos there. What happened to him? I don't know. Yeah, he must have grabbed to go to hell, and when he comes back, Zeus is already dead. He's like, oh, cool. Yeah, or maybe he just fucking died. He was like, whatever, you, you, nice. can, you can do it, <laughs> other Kratos. That Kratos wasn't as committed as the one of our time, timeline. He says, oh, I guess I'm dead now. But yeah, here comes Athena, being a fucking idiot. Uh... I remember seeing Zeus crawling around in the background. <laughs> like, oh, damn it. <laughs> like, ouch. <laughs> you fool. Yeah, here it comes. Curtis is going to go for that extra stab. He stabs Zeus in the chest so many times. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because when we finish this part, the, the game, he just goes back up to Olympus and then he's fine. Yeah. But no worries. <laughs> um. Yeah, and Kratos feels really bad about stabbing Athena, even though she's been kind of a cunt to you, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I appreciate this, because this, uh, this helps inform a certain event much later in these games. So, Yeah, and then Kratos is like real mad, and so he decides, I'm going to go back in time, grab the Titans, and set up God of War 3 by attacking Mount Olympus. It's like, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but you have access to all of time... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe you start to think about how all this happened. It's like, why do you want to kill the gods? Because they betrayed you. Why did they betray you? It's like, well, you became a god of war and got too zealous. And it's like, why did that happen? And it's like, well, I ended up killing Ares and becoming god of war. It's like, why did that happen? You're like, well, I hate Ares and, uh, and they wanted me to do it. And it's like, why'd you hate Ares? It's like, oh, well, he tricked me into, um, into, into killing, killing my killing family. My family. Oh and that's man, the, the one event that go back there. <laughs> the one event he would absolutely want to change and can change. Yeah. And um yeah, once you realize that, uh I think this is what absolutely annihilates God of War 2's story. Yep. Um, absolutely. There's nothing any developer or writer can say cuz it's fucked. Uh And did did you say that the comment on this was that he was too angry? Yeah, apparently the, the devs or writers said he was too angry to remember his family. It's That's like, uh, fuck unac off. Unacceptable. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> um, Although it's kind of, it's probably worth mentioning, like Zeus is alive this whole time while you do li your little adventure and he just doesn't care to stop you. You have the power of the fates and he's not doing anything about yeah, it. Yeah, he's not doing shit. Uh, this, it's the same with God of War 3, to be honest. Well, you, well, I guess the God of War 3 is busy fighting the Titans. I guess you have a little bit of leeway there. It's even worse that the writers would have said that, because that means they literally have no fucking clue like how, yeah. to, how to justify this one. It's like, I Kratos kind of forgot, exactly. A <laughs> little bit, yeah. <clears throat> I'm too mad to remember my motivation. Yeah, meanwhile, in 2018, it feels like that's never, ever, ever not on his mind. Like that, yeah. that whole event, even with the new family. Um... But yeah, uh, despite all, all the things we just said, though, I love God of War 2. Mechanically, it's fucking rock solid at this point. Almost everything is, uh, is working super, super duper well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it, and you get some cool big old spectacle pieces, plenty of characters to meet once again, and uh, fun fights, and, you know, good style upgrades, difficult challenges and stuff. The final fight being less, a lot less cringe, actually, than uh, God of War 1. And then super hype for a uh, for setting up God of War Three. It was like, oh my god, you're yeah. Right. So, um, which I mean, I guess we'll move on to because <laughs> this thing. Me and Mel are not going to be here all night, okay, folks? Having yeah. A nice casual chat. Gosh. And so begins God of War Three, uh, which I've said before and I'll say again. I was hyped as hell for this game. Got it on release and played it all night, and that was one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time when I first played this game. It's such a hype game. <laughs> it delivers on so many levels. Dude, the fucking intro credits. Did you did you play this on your stream? Uh, I assume I did. This is when you boot up the game. It's not when you hit start. Oh, so, oh yeah, I think I, I put great. in the, I put in the PS3 version of the Saga edition, and it forces you to watch it the first time. So I I I did at least watched it offline when I checked out the. Oh, it's the... Uh, sorry, we only mentioned it yet. It's a given. The fucking music in all the oh, War games is Dude. glorious. 
replaying the, these now and just l listening a bit more to the music, I think it's one of my favorite soundtracks in video gaming. It's fucking awesome. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, when, this, this intro credits just summarizes the events of God of War 1 and 2. And despite the fact that we mm -hmm. just went over how goofy they are, when they presented like this and they end with an army of titans after an army of gods, you just like you just can't you can't not be hype. That's how it works. Yeah. And uh, yeah, gorgeous artwork as well. And like I said, the the track behind all this. And yeah, this was this felt like the almost the height of uh, God of War's popularity for for gaming. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, it's probably been uh, it's re reached its renaissance again now with uh, hell yeah with Ragnarok as well. Gonna be really curious I'm, 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 pro I'm, I'm even more excited for Ragnarok than I was for Elden Ring. Yeah, I, I think that, that I would agree with you on that one. Uh, uh, I, I can't I was, I was excited I was, for Elden was, Ring, though. I was pretty excited for Elden Ring. I, I mean, I played the fuck out of that game. Like, I think my, one of my first streams was like 12 hours long. <laughs> like, I played the fuck oh, out of yeah, that game. Oh, yeah, that was a long boy, uh, Elden Ring. Yeah, I haven't touched it since, by the way. Uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, um, I was invested in Elden Ring mechanically. Uh, yeah. I'm invested in God of War mechanically and for story. Uh, oh, yeah. Both to very high degrees, so it's just like, yeah, this is a super satisfaction. Yeah. The only um, thing I've heard so far is from the initial reviews is that it's, it's, it's liked, but that doesn't mean anything necessarily. I'm just avoiding everything. Someone's already mentioned, I think it's in a super chat that we'll, we'll try and get to, but um, the YouTube's already filled with fucking spoilers and they're recommending it to people who have I anything to do with God of War. I somehow completely avoid it. I just feel bad because people who were watching our streams been telling me it's like, oh yeah, YouTube is just recommending to me all these spoilers that are in thumbnails, and it's like, god I've, damn it. On about five or six separate occasions, I'll be reading titles of just random videos, and it'll say like Thor and a trip, and I'll be like, nope, no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I have been really lucky. I haven't seen anything on Twitter, nothing on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, so the story spoiler, for this game really. is super straightforward. Uh, you attack We're attacking Olympus with with the Titans against the gods, and as the game progresses, you all the Titans and all the gods die. <laughs> everyone <laughs> fucking awesome. dies. This is the it's everyone great. dies game, and it it is hilarious. And it's funny because it's like the shortest God of War. I, I want to say I don't know if that's actually true. I'm guessing it, it is. Feels like the shortest. It goes by so quickly. Yep, and uh, it's I don't know, man. It's just like. It's perfect. <laughs> like it's, I fucking love this game. Um, like you start, you're on the back of Gaia, and it's like, Zeus! and you just start start ripping shit apart. Yeah, uh, this is the peak of the formula. They nailed it. They've done it. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny. You see Gaia fighting against Poseidon a bit, and. This play for us, like, man, no wonder the Titans fucking lost. You guys have no fucking chance. <laughs> no, the gods are super powered. Is... Poseidon is handling like a little clown boy guy. Uh, like, you, <laughs> you getting wrecked. Yeah, Poseidon uh, just fucking shoots right through the heart of one of the Titans to open. Yeah, it's he like... just kills one on the way to Gaia. He's like, fuck you, get wrecked. He's like, no. There was a there was a post on uh, the Mola subreddit asking why Mola got rid of his part three of the God of War three stream. And someone's like, "What do you mean?" It's like, "Well, because you know it was four parts for God of War one, three for God of War two. So how many? It wasn't just two for God of War three, was it?" It's like, "Yeah, there was." <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, I think I, two. I had two or three for for the run. Uh... So it's 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 really strange. Me, I blasted check. through this game. And um, to be honest with you, in retrospect, I probably should have tried. I don't know if it would have become the spike of difficulty oh, yeah, could have been too much, but um, I, had, I had two parts as well. I'd be curious to try it on. This would be the, the out of all the games. This is the one I wouldn't mind trying on the hardest difficulty because I you think you 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 steamroll pretty hard towards the end. You get so many orbs; it's yeah. crazy. There's a couple of parts in this campaign that are pretty difficult, though, and I wonder how they play on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. Pretty sure I did it on the PS3 back in the day. Um, I don't know if I could do it these days without blowing some kind of aneurysm or something. That mm -hmm. tends to happen when you start, you know, struggling through it. But yeah, just what can you say about this game? Um, graphically gorgeous. Mechanically, yeah. they've listened and listened and they've put everything in place to be the way that people would likely want it. Mm -hmm. And story, I mean, they've they've they made Kratos kill all of the Greek gods, and they gave them very specific and gruesome deaths oh yeah 
That's oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Some of the some of the gods just get one hit killed though, which is a little bit disappointing. Like, uh, is it he? Not, yeah, Helios is it, right? He just gets Helios is one of the disappointing the ones, I would say. Yeah, because um, the like Poseidon being almost the tutorial kill is is uh, acceptable, I think, as well as the spectacle of it is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Hades is my favorite boss fight Hades in the original is trilogy. Fucking awesome. It's my favorite fight too. Like visually, the way you go, you get his weapon, and then he comes out of the water like as a skeleton, basically. It's like, oh. Yeah, awesome. it's so thematically, it's perfect. You kill him with his own weapons. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I love the way it starts. Uh, Clancy Brown fucking nailing it as a voice. And then this arena. And uh, yeah, cinematically spectacle. It's it's all just top notch, and it's quite cool in terms of mechanics. A lot of it is very well telegraphed and varied yeah. in terms of what you're dealing with. Very very strong boss fight. Oh, of course, the music as well is fucking top notch. Oh, you mm, don't skip clown boy. I mean, we you know Poseidon, you clown him <laughs> like a little clown boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You, you, you just fucking put your thumbs in his my your thumbs in his eyes, and you get the POV of it. It's like Jesus. Yeah, so, this is a cool awesome. intro for Hades. Your soul is mine. And yeah. The, by the way, Hades is a good example of. I think a lot of people in chat will probably say this now. Like, uh, people don't like his design. I think it's fucking awesome. I love it. It's great. I love the the furnace type mask face he's got going, and then yeah, just yeah, this. Then just Flashy, spiky, like all of it is fucking gross. And, uh, and you, you start ch like legitimately just cutting parts of, off of his body. Yeah. And they kind of live, and then you have to beat them up. Uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I remember some people feeling like he's too beastly and flashy and stuff. They don't, they don't like it. And it makes me think about um, Thor. You know, we'll be seeing how that ends up soon enough. Which is as early as tomorrow, mm. but I trust them to have their own versions of this stuff. Um, yeah, we'll see. But I yeah. mean, I, I I have faith in Ragnarok. I really do. They did such a good job with 2018. I and people keep saying uh, Corey Balrog is his name, right? <laughs> Balrog. Balrog. I say Balrog. It's funnier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, he liked The Last of Us 2. It's like, yeah, maybe, but this is like his hey, own hey, story. Plenty like, of people we trust like Last of Us 2, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And hey, whatever. The proof will be in the pudding, right? If it's bad, it's bad. Absolutely. If it's good, it's good. We'll see. I'll be, I'll be furious if it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I will be very sad, yeah. That's, that's the... I'll be, oh. Don't don't take. I said it on my on my last uh, God of War 2018 series. Like, please don't take this franchise away from me. Just let me have this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the one I nice. really really like. <laughs> I want this one to go on forever. I want Egypt, <clears throat> and I want it to be amazing. I mean, you you go through it, and you're like, they do exist. Like Egyptians and the and the Mayans, they both exist. We have proof with Tears Temple in that one. So we can go there. We, we, well, I'm pretty sure got this Japanese, also, Chinese, and Celtic too. So there's just shit yeah. Tons. And they already confirmed that Tyr was able to go through all these realms with the that Omni Stone or whatever it was called. Well, I, I mean, it's funny you say that. I'm pretty sure the developers are confirmed that we're, we're seconds from that being confirmed in universe. That I'm pretty sure, unfortunately, the reality is they see it as like a planet, and the you know the Greek stuff is like around. The Greece area, and then the Norse stuff is like Scandinavian countries or something. As if that's apparently that's how it works. And I was just like, ah, oh, that's don't make <laughs> it work like that, please. That's so dumb. Like, cause yeah, th th there should have been so much more crossover by now if that's how it worked. But apparently, that's gonna be how they're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, I really want to see the gods that we didn't see die or see seen at all, like Artemis, for example, like. I think she she already is in there as like a voice line. You, I think you get a weapon or a magic of from hers, right? Maybe. Hmm. Uh, if I'm not mixing anything up. Uh, wait, sorry. What was your question? Like, oh, I, I I was just going for that. I want to see the gods that we didn't see die, who might have just been chilling out while everything was happening. Oh yeah, there's still plenty of them to, to utilize for that. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, they could just come around. It's like, you, I've been searching for you. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, just Artemis comes back from a holiday and, like, Greece is in, <laughs> in, in ruin. <laughs> yeah, I, the way I want it is some form of dimension, realm, world, whatever, travel. Like, it can't be as simple as, yeah. like, actually. Because they're like, he got on a boat and sailed over and got to a different mythology. It's like, no. <laughs> gotta be harder than that. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Um, yes. Got to be more we can say about God of War 3, because it's fucking great. Uh, uh, I mean, I already mentioned it. Kronos just hates you now uh, for doing things to Gaia, even though Gaia is apparently still alive, so I don't know how he missed that, because he must have fallen down right there where the hand was. Uh, she must have. Right, her hand must have fallen all the way down into <laughs> Arteris? Yeah, yeah, apparently so. It feels uh, odd, but fine. Uh, I like that you. I like that you. Uh, that you fuck a faceless wife and then kill him. That's pretty badass. That was funny, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the 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 uh, Chronos fight is absolutely insane. Chronos is a moron, but mm -hmm. spectacle wise, holy the spectacle shit. is amazing. But Chronos is like, I'm gonna hit you here. Ah, oh, damn it, I missed. And then you, you don't move at all. He's like, Where did you go, you coward? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm in the same place. What are you talking about? <laughs> and he falls for the fucking. He has had twice. Yeah, he keeps <laughs> fucking that up. Oh. It's really funny, but it's a really cool spectacle. I, I like it a lot. Well, yeah, the way that you just <clears throat> set... You know how fast you cut open his stomach? Made me think that <laughs> Kratos was insane. like fucking Sonic running inside on his, on his <laughs> stomach on the inside. Yeah, and then you, then, then, then you find his kidney stone right there that you need for a face to... Yeah, but uh, I forgot the name clarify, of the stone. You didn't know that that was the thing you needed, right? That wasn't the, that's where it was. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, you didn't know where it was. You were just kind of fighting Kronos, and all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh shit, there it is! Oh nice." Yeah, this is the power. Just, look how fucking fast he goes when he does that. Yeah, he goes like, he's like, "Yeah, here's my stone." You're like, "Oh, okay, cool." Yeah. Poor Kronos. He's had a rough existence, and you put him out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have you have what you came for. Leave me. Leave me be. Oh boy, did I skip over Hercules? I shouldn't have done. Well, you just fell down with some Cestus, so you must have. I really love the Hercules fight. It's my favorite after Hades. Yeah, no, I think this is a good one, uh, especially uh, how it ends. <clears throat> I like the last b uh, bit of it, where where you where you have the gauntlets and you you basically just beat each other up the whole time, like you both covered in blood like crazy. Fucking uh, Hera is just getting beat. drunk watching it as well. It's so funny. She's like, "Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna watch my sons fuck each other up." <laughs> Yeah, you're like both covered in blood and like grabbing each other and then you yeet him into the spikes and just, oh, it's great. I love it. It's a really dirty fight, like really dirty and gritty between two great A warriors. I, I love it. I love it. I love that um, aspect of the magical shit, by the way, that uh, you can do a full combo leaving you wide open to whatever it is, like an AoE attack or mm -hmm. maybe a big combo. It's just start up one of your uh, magic moves and you're immune to damage. It's like, oh, thank fuck. Yeah. And you do damage at the same time. It's a huge, big old benefit. Yeah, you do eventually fuck him up. And you unlock the weapons in the game that are just really it's so good. good. It's so good. They stun people to shit. Oh, yeah, and then you bash Hercules' face in like crazy. And just bash him, bash him. Like, you put a dent in his skull. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm probably just going to let it play, but uh, this game <laughs> graphically was a jump from God of War 2. And, uh, Absolutely. That's why when they're putting the, the blood and titties, now it's getting like, oh my god, it's like getting there, lads. We're getting real close. Yeah. Uh, I imagine Ragnarok will look gorgeous, but it's probably not going to be like a shocking upgrade from yeah. 2018. One of my streams got age-restricted midstream. That was fun. Because of boobies? No wait, they're on. I, I, I would uh, boobies or I played the the sex mini game too much. I don't know. 
because <laughs> I did it three times the first time for the beam and for the orbs. Look at the way he fucking hangs onto the edge there. I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, and that's why that's why I found out that when your stream gets age restricted, people can't send super chats anymore, and I was very confused by that. Huh. That doesn't make sense. No. The age restriction has nothing to do with super chats, at least from what I understand. It's just the uh, ad restriction. But people are like, hey, the super chats don't work. I was like, wait, what? Why? And then I checked, like, yeah, it didn't work. And then I got curious and I, <laughs> I restarted the stream and then it worked again. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Weird. Hercules definitely died from that. Yeah, he's already dead there. And then you punch him through the floor. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you kill Festus, you kill Hera, Hermes is dead. Then you do the whole Pandora's box labyrinth thing. And this is just strange. Like the whole construction of the box, the destruction of the judges in order to pull on the chain. Yeah. Which, all of that is in favor of just getting Pandora to the flame, right? It looks like it. You built the whole thing, and then you just get it up, destroy it completely, almost killing Pandora in the meantime, all to just get her and up there. Obviously, the and most hilarious like, fucking... realization is that Icarus is supposed to do all of this. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's so <laughs> no funny. No way. <laughs> Icarus was that uh, weedy fucking loser with like the the wigs. Like, what was he gonna do? <laughs> he stole yeah. his people and all. Never gonna happen. Um, yeah, it's bizarre, because, it, I gotta be honest, it feels a little bit unsatisfying when you do everything you do in this game, and the whole thing is to just ram the fucking box through <laughs> the floor, everything's falling apart, it's just like, yeah, right, now I can yeah. go in the flame, you're like, oh, okay. Well, there's someone chat mentioned we skipped Hermes, yeah, he just runs away from you, and then you beat him up. You chop off his legs, quite rough. But, chop uh... off his legs, <laughs> take his, his shoes. Um, uh, yeah. So I just want to make sure I... I'm gonna play it as well because it's funny as fuck. This is after your first fight with Zeus. Oh, it's before this though. Are you going for the yell again? I am indeed. <laughs> <sighs> Missing this. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's that face, man. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, because Zeus says, like, don't fail your family like you always do, or whatever the fuck. He's a, he's a, he's a bum. Zeus is a mean man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping in the Ragnarok playthrough that we get to have uh, more references to Mimir or Tyr's knowledge of Zeus. That would be neat. Or anything yeah, to do I with mean, the Greek. They, all, they all know now what he's been up to, so... Interesting Ghost to, to hear what, what, they, what the Norse thought of that. Yeah. Um, and by the way, the, this this is this is the end of the angry Kratos arc. If you notice there, like as much as the as much as Pandora is kind of cringy, um, I totally. agree. All right, it's fine. You got me. I, yeah, I, I, I totally I concede. Uh, Kratos was trying to save her here, despite this being his goal, because he's going to kill. He's going like, to beat Olympus with all of this plan. He's like, no, I don't want you to die. Mm -hmm. He does actually. This is this is him opting for now. Nah, fuck you! I'm gonna beat up Zeus. Fuck Pandora. Um, and I think you have to, even though, like I said, it's a little bit cringe. You have to kind of take this uh, for a serious part of his development. This is the like he did the same thing again. He lost someone he cared about because he was so fucking angry and he wanted vengeance and shit. Um, because I was distracted by this, 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 just this face. Like, I just think it's funny. But the, what's supposed to be happening here is he's so fucking pissed. He just lets her go and starts beating up Zeus. Um, and of course kills Zeus. And he gets the, the, the ending you often get in stories that tell this. Of, you know, revenge isn't, isn't actually as satisfying as you think. Um. Or at that least fight is he, pretty tough, by the way. This fight was in, tough. In, uh, in Gaia. In, in Gaia's belly, heart region. Yes. It they is, can it fuck is. you up. <clears throat> Felt like I got stuck on this for a while. I did. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Um, though I think it's... I saw someone pointing out, and it's kind of neat, that as much as it's a little bit goofy, but stabbing Zeus through into Ze uh, Gaia's heart, being that your, your vengeance bringing you to a point of killing Zeus is fucking stabbing like the earth in its heart. 
<laughs> yeah. It's just like, yeah, crew just fucks up everything. Um, where are we? Ah, uh, yeah, so th this is the part we should probably talk about in terms of storytelling, anyway. The, uh... Um, yeah. They really wanted to push to you in God of War 3. The the reason everything is great is because of hope. Hope is hope. what we need, like, guys. Hope will get uh. us through. And you're just like, okay. And I think if they had said that word once or twice, it may have been something. But holy fuck, they said it like a million times. And, uh, hope! Kratos, kept, hope! Kept repeating that fucking cutscene of her saying, mm -hmm. Hope is what we need, Kratos. Hope is like the sun, as someone just pointed out, yeah. Yeah, and and then Athena is like, "Wait, how did you do this? Did you have some kind of amazing weapon? Did you have what is this? What is?" And he's like, "Hope. Where did you get your hope from?" And then it plays the cutscene again. And you're just like, "Hey, okay. uh, stop it!" And yeah, um, and then they Kratos releases hope to the world or something. Well, I was gonna say they recontextualize the three games in that in when Pandora's box was completed and Zeus oh, put right, yeah. evil into it. Uh, Athena put good stuff into it too. Now, presumably, that was that hope, or was that just Athena's powers or something? I wish well, I don't know. This. She seems confused. It's like, hey, I know you have the weapon. I put it in there. Yeah. And, and then, then it's like the whole hope thing. And so then you I don't know up, what she's confused about. And you used something to beat Ares. And she thought originally that you'd used, like, the dark power or whatever. Then she was like, no, the dark power actually went to the gods, and that's what made them assholes in God of War 2 and 3, where mm -hmm. they weren't in 1. Which is, like, an attempt to try and make the games make a little bit more sense, but you still have a bunch of things that don't make sense to run with that. Especially because yeah. God of War 2 already had its own rationale for why the gods hated you in God of War 2. Um, but I guess this is trying to explain why Zeus is such a twat. Uh, the... Yeah. And then she's like, you know, so give it back. And then, it's, and then she realizes, like, you've had it the whole time, or at least since God of War 1. And then she's like, okay, we'll give it back. And then he stabs himself, which releases hope, quote-unquote, into the entire world. Something like that, yeah. I think that's what they want to go for. And then Athena, like, laughably is like, hey, they don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so, give it back. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Like, they don't know what to do with hope. They're useless. <laughs> But the, the awkward thing about it all is that it seems to be that Athena decided at some point she's chill with all the gods dying if it means she can take over. Yeah. Which is interesting. Um, and you wonder, whatever happened to her, why can't it happen to the other gods, you know, becoming spirit mode or whatever? Well, I and, guess uh, Zeus kind of went into spirit mode there, but, but then kill not him. really. <laughs> then you kill him, saying, so, okay. So, yeah, um, very much this game just feels like it's like vengeance is bad, hope is good. Like, okay. Fine. Didn't think that's what we were going for, but all right. And then, yeah, uh, Kratos rolls off the edge of the cliff, and we're like, oh, where did he go? Oh, my God. Yeah, he stabs himself with the blade of Olympus. You know, it's like, you dick. Because, yeah, this is the world now. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not looking great. So that's a bit, no, no. Um, Could use some work. Yeah, and that's what Zeus says, right, before you kill him, too. He's like, I have much work to do after I kill you. Which is funny, because it's like, every fight we have, I win unless you trick me, so. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sucks, Zeus, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, uh, God of War 3 story is, is, is kind of bad again. 1, 2, add 3, the stories are just not, not great, but they facilitate the experience of playing as a man who runs around killing everything, and as the games progress, it gets smoother mechanically. They just they just keep getting upgrades. They keep figuring out what players find annoying, and they keep trying to reduce yeah. on those experiences while increasing the ones people really like and the difficult challenges and stuff. Uh, while cycling you through interesting lands, and I mean, hey, this this was the big one because it's like we just killed all of them at this point, like all the famous gods from the Greek pantheon. All, all not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, yeah. As James has pointed out, apparently canonically. When when he stabs himself, the blade pours all the god powers into Kratos. Apparently, that is a thing that that's um, canon. When you say all the god powers, what are we referring to? The the the, the powers. I guess the powers you put in the blade and two they go back in now. Okay. Because apparently the blade stops glowing after you stab yourself. Well, I mean, it would make uh, some sense in the yeah you have. Get tons of power in 2018, so you must have it from... I mean, you are god, right? You are pretty much full... Because you're demigod in God of War 1. <laughs> then you're yeah. full god in God of War 2. 
What are you once you have your god power stripped from you in God of War 2? Are you still god? Or are you not god? I'm not entirely 100% sure on it. <laughs> I don't think... I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, but yes, God of War 3, mechanically, I'm like happy to settle on like 9 to 10 out of 10. I just, I wouldn't change much of anything about it. Yeah. Uh, story. Make the, make the story grabs better, man. and then you, then you get full points. <laughs> yeah, the grabs are like the only thing that I was having issues with. Uh, and I don't know why they're not more generous with them to the point of if you hit circle within like a meter, in-game meter of, of anyone with a circle above their head, that should just count. Yeah. yeah. I don't see why you wouldn't. Players have enough trouble to deal with some other stuff, you know. Uh, DM I, I hear DMC is considered the better uh, hack and slash if if action game if they're in that genre but i just uh for what this I game is i've always i enjoy god of war better i do love dmc uh it has much more depth and depth in the combat for sure uh much more weapons much more variety uh i would agree with that um but yeah and it's it's also harder to master uh because that's like one of those games where people just go for like those triple s ranks all the time and stuff and uh yeah Looking at my uh, my plays playlist and it's like, oh yes, that's where I took the sort of break to play Scorn. Oh uh, yeah, that was a fucking Ugh. waste of our time. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a God of War stream, dab you. Uh, yeah. Well, God Scorn. Yeah, God of War three happened, and and that was it. I I even remember thinking I was like, what a great series. That was fun. Cool. That was that was fun. Yeah. And then yeah, like we mentioned, the Ascension stuff happened. And I was like, eh. and then I remember the it was one of those. You know, PlayStation, Sony things, and then the God of War trailer, and he was like, "What the fuck is this?" Oh God! And he was like, "Norse." And he was like, "What? Wait, how? What? What is happening? <laughs> what is going? What is this?" The, then yeah, the game came out. And what's kind of funny is, um, I played this when it came out in 2018, did a full playthrough, and then I did again mm -hmm. recently. And it was funny; some people in chat were familiar with some of the stuff I did on that playthrough, and they were comparing, uh, in terms of like I had like a very different run. For both of them, in terms of what armors and what weapons and what runes I chose. Well, for one, we didn't use the laser on our other playthroughs. I Bruce. don't even remember <laughs> if I picked it up. Um, that's the, you know, I had that's it, the I just thing, never used it. The one thing I'm really going to try uh, in Ragnarok is actually experimenting instead of... I, I have a serious problem with some games I play where as soon as I'm, I really like a thing, I'm like, no, I'm just using this now. I, I <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's me. God of War isn't as interested in being complex and engaging for an extremely long time on gameplay alone. It is more interested in spectacle than pure combat depth. Um, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. God of War is not trying to run for a very... The, the, certainly by the time you hit the 2018 era the, of God of War, it's, um, it's what, it really wants to tell a story, and it has mechanics in it. it used to be mm -hmm. that it was a story just facilitated characters and worlds to have combat take place in but now it feels like the, the focus is more so on the story as opposed to the mechanics which may be something of a conversation for us to go through in terms of this was a bit of a switch up they changed yeah. god of war it was uh quite radical in terms of a format change you don't get this that often in franchises but it happens here and there yeah um uh, I'm not even sure where to begin. I mean, the, this this game it hits you pretty hard, pretty quick in terms of like, wait, what the fuck? Everything's very uh, quiet, deliberate, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, uh, almost melancholic in a lot of ways. And as a person who's just come off God of War three, you'd, you'd be a little bit forgiven to be like, what the hell's going on? Um, yeah. What do you say? How much time has passed? Is it a thousand years? Well, apparently, canonically, is a thousand years, but we. <laughs> There were some debates in my chat, and I talked about it as well. Like, I, I, I don't know how much sense that makes a thousand years. Maybe, like, something akin to, well, like, 150 or something. Like, a thousand years is a long time. I don't know what the fuck Kratos was doing this whole time. It does make you think, like, what was he filling that time with? This... Yeah. Canonically, it was 30 seconds. I mean, it was thing. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll see if they say anything else. Yeah, it's just uh... a thousand years is nothing to a god. Stop this nonsense. When people say that about like elves or gods or whatever, he's like, "What do you mean it's nothing? All the most meaningful things that have happened in Kratos' life took place in days and hours." Yeah, the idea is like, "Oh, fucking whatever." It's a thousand years. It's like, no, <laughs> it's a long time. Lots of things will happen in a thousand years. 
Um, and that's okay. It's just to be curious to, to, to know if anything super significant did. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I forgot that's that's the armor you start with in this game. Because <laughs> I played Yu-Gi-Oh! Plus, I had, like, Sindri's big boy armor on. Yeah. Like, it was fully decked out. <laughs> Which was kind of funny when you get to the blade scene. Because in this scene, I already had them on my back. <laughs> Go get them. Well, and since we're talking about this one now, you can just may as well ask the question. What is your favorite God of War game, Metal? This one. Yes, By this far. one as well for me as well. It's... I adore this game. As do I. And I can't really empathize that much with the people who hate this game. <laughs> I just don't I understand. can't either. I really, I really can't. I can't. I do prefer the combat of the older ones. I just find them more fun. Uh, that's the only thing that I can, that I always say. Yeah. But I fucking love this game. Um, and I'll say it again. It's, I played it again. There's no other game that makes me happier when I play it. <laughs> it's, it's my, it, it is legit my favorite game. It is. It, it makes me very happy when I play it as well. Uh, I, yeah, I've lost to uh, celebrate and congratulate about it um, in lots of its aspects, but... You know, there's, there's. I know people want us to cover like he's like, can you watch the the Matthew Matosis video or the like an EFAP or the there's a video that's like, uh, God of War 2018 is terrible. Um, I remember one of the main arguments being like the whole game is stupid because it only happens because Kratos just doesn't tell his kid that he's a god, and it's like yeah, but like yeah, there's a reason for that. It's in the game. You, you learn that when you play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very very big point of the game. Which makes Atreus even sick because he doesn't know his true roots. Yeah, which is um, a strange mechanic, but I mean, whatever. It's a, a fantasy yeah. world; and they make it clear. <clears throat> um, you know, and and this is the thing. I uh, I'm more than happy to talk through with plenty of people about all the different flaws this game has. But like, oh my god, the especially getting a refresh on it, the writing, man. I don't know what happened between three and four. <laughs> Like all of a sudden, like you know what we're gonna do an actual story this time. But yeah, because uh, it was funny because Fring was praising a lot of the the writing and stuff, and I was like, dude, you haven't even met Mamiya yet. Like oh he's God, I uh, fucking love Mamiya. Just listen to Mamiya talk forever about anything. Yeah. And um, then the interactions between the three of them, like this is gonna be one of the main reasons I'm looking forward to Ragnarok. Just listening to the fucking characters talk. You must be doing something right if I'm not even talking about like. You know how much I want to see particular story beats or mechanics. I'm like, I'm just really excited that a character will be talking in the middle of like walking around. Is um, because it's been gone over, right? But the, the the dynamic of the stoic, silent type, the wide-eyed, adventurous, happy, wholesome type, mm. and the cynical, jokey, snarky, witty type, like this, those three put together. And then you have different events to to spin on different different things, and Brock and Sindri acting as uh, uh, sort of pacing, helping bounces while while they're the ones that are facilitating upgrades and armors and weapons and stuff. It's just like they, yeah, it feels like much more of a marriage for the uh, mechanical and story progression in in twenty eighteen, as well as just yeah, dramatic improvement for writing quality. Which uh, I never would have thought we'd gotten to the point where. Um, you know, all those events we just went through in God of War 1, 2, and 3 are, like, recontextualized in this game as uh, nostalgic and incredibly heartfelt and meaningful to the point of creating yeah. some of my favorite moments in games. But um, somehow they managed to pull it off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild to think about. It's definitely not a thing you would have expected after playing the other ones. And then you have this this one one shot camera basically throughout the game. Uh, it's yeah, just the characters talk like people to each other. It's all very well written for the most part. Uh, Christopher Judge as Kratos is fucking awesome. His voice is so good. Yeah, he's uh, uh, his performance is exceptional. Did, did I just catch... Theo, do you say you hate this game? Holy shit, I didn't know that. I'm gonna beat you up, Theo. I was gonna beat you up. You gotta run. Get you. Yeah. It is, uh, it is interesting. This is, like I said, this game inspires a lot of hate from a lot of people. I, I just never quite cracked as to exactly how or why. I, mean, uh, I didn't see Theo say that. Oh, I don't know. I, don't if know I, I, I might have misread it. That's why I was asking. 
I didn't use the word. Oh no, game. he said I don't like this game at all. Oh no, Theo, why did you do this to us? I just very much dislike it. Damn. We should talk about that sometime. The uh, Yeah, I don't know. Because the it's the It might well do you how do you feel about the other God of War games? So maybe there's a relative understanding here that's going on. Yeah. If you hate them all. <clears> that's and kind of, you know. <laughs> Someone just says Theo needs a wedgie. <laughs> Leave Theo alone. I mean, Theo run, they're wedging you. <laughs> um, oh, maybe if I can fast forward to the mechanical changes. Now, the big thing is going to be the uh, there's less combo depth and more restriction in camera. Yeah. Uh, and were they restricted enough to destroy it? Or not, and um, I don't know. The mechanics are totally fine for me. I think they pretty much they, they come close to nailing the capacity at which they operate at. They're not mm -hmm. as complex or able to be varied as the originals, as far as I'm concerned. But they they're not that. Um, and I feel like I don't know. They're, 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 there's a more of an obsession with the comparison as opposed to trying to appreciate this game for what it did or what it is. Yeah. I, I get where people are coming from. Uh, if you really like the spectacle fighting and the more hack and slash kind of dealio, uh, you're definitely not going to be served here for the most part. There's like some, some, some sections where you, you kind of smash through a lot of smaller enemies. Because um, I, I, I think the DMC, uh, now I say DMC, uh, the God of War 1 to 3 is probably the ones I prefer for fun for sure. But I don't think this combat is bad, like, at all. It's perfectly functional. Uh, the... It has some variety. You can fuck around with the things. Uh, you have the whole stand system that you that I actually needed a, a bit to properly learn. Because actually, th that's like one of the things I don't like uh, in the stand system. I think it takes a bit too long to change these stances. It feels unnatural sometimes. Like, you s completely stop for a second. And wait for Kratos to go back with the axe, and then you can do it again. Right. Um, yeah, I I like it. It's not my favorite combat uh, ever, but I think it 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 does well. Well, by the time I'd unlocked everything, uh, I was just I was thoroughly enjoying using it. So, <clears throat> um, you know, like arguments of it being boring or shallow, I they just don't do much for me. Uh. Especially because this is the thing, I, I thought it was like varied enough without even cracking um, the stance changes, but I'm going to try and make use of them as well, and presumably if they show up in yeah. Ragnarok. I, I really needed them in New Game Plus because enemies, they hit hard and they could tank quite a few chunks. And the, the stance moves that they dealt a signif significant, <laughs> significant uh, amount more damage uh, than normal attacks. The runic attacks not included, of course. They they absolutely wreck shit. I had like 300 runic at the end of my playthrough. <laughs> Mula be sounding like a TLJ defender. But this Wait, is what? good, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a good game. I'd be, uh, I'd be surprised if someone was going to try and argue this game is actually badly designed or something. Uh, good luck. Because um, I actually think it does function... Uh, really consistently for what it's trying to pull off. I don't see how, what kind of framing you'd have for the argument. I know that there's ones that say, like, the camera is just too narrow, and so it's going to cost you your ability to uh, be able to see attacks coming from behind you and to plan and stuff. But the, the reality uh -huh. is that so many people manage to get through this game without that being a problem. So what is happening? Because it doesn't seem to describe reality, does it? Like, well, yeah. the fact is... There were, like, like a f only a handful of sections where it would... Would have liked the camera to be a bit uh, farther off, but that was pr when I was like positioned against a wall or something, uh, or that something with the camera where I couldn't move it properly. But for the most part, you could you can see those indicators. You know, when something's attacking from the side, it just starts blinking red, so you can just uh, yeah, start and, dodging. And, um, then they're <clears throat> surprisingly accurate in the callouts from Atreus and Mimir. Like if you mm -hmm. listen to them, they they gives you the behind to the left to the right. Like, yeah, that's actually I quite quite like that. It's pretty fun because Mimir is looking behind you at all times when when you're just walking around. So it's like, look out behind you, and then he's just like, oh shit, okay. 
Yeah, and then the indicators are something mm -hmm. that I made use of. Uh, so, like, this is the thing. It Every once in a while, I'll get hit, and I'll just be like, oh, what? Like, I, I was never going to know that that was happening sort of thing, but, uh, yeah. Um, that's a fallacy. Most people didn't mind. So is your criticism even legit? That's not what I said. I said, um... <laughs> The camera is as such that you'll be attacked without being able to account for it. And then I said, but then if that reality doesn't actually map on to people's experiences, then you must be inaccurate in some way about the assessment. Because uh, this is the thing I was trying to point out about ukulele back in the day, when people were saying, like, camera just doesn't fucking work, it's cool, it's stuck, blah, 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 and it's just like, okay, so majority, like 95% of the time, people aren't even noticing the camera uh, being non-functional. And then that's a, that's a ratio that actually matches a lot of games of its kind. So it's just like, what the hell's going on? Like, this doesn't this make sense. And it's the same thing for this game. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's happening because it's getting compared directly with something like God of War 3, which, funnily enough, when I was playing 1, 2, and 3, 1, I think more so than the th 2 and 3, had this problem of some of the, the camera choices they had. This is, the, this is the thing. When you have cameras controlled by you... Um, it means that uh, you're going to be putting it in directions that mean you don't get to see certain things you need to see. But then it's like, okay, so then we have it controlled by the game. Like, yeah, but what if the game puts it in a place that, like, you don't want it to be looking at the time? Like, these are, like, the pros and cons of each mm -hmm. uh, approach. In God of War 1, there was a couple of times, it's hard to remember exactly when, but one of them was, like, a series of platforms I went forward on. And the camera was fine. But when I went back on it, the camera didn't flip around. It was the same position, so I had to jump toward the camera on the platforms. Which is one of the most awkward and, like, impossibly difficult things to see and, and account for. And it's just like, well, that's just a fucking camera issue, isn't it? Um, sometimes it would be, like, an arena shot, but the enemies would get squeezed out just to the sides. And they actually go past the, the view of the camera. And so then I have to, like, mm -hmm. wait for them to come back onto the camera before I can even see them. Um, but then, by the time you hit God of War 3, I think they'd ironed it out almost perfectly. Uh, and I imagine that's something that they're trying to do with this game as well. Because uh, there's, there's... God of War 3 gets the benefit of two games before it, testing out all the same <laughs> formulas sort of thing, getting feedback each time. So I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I find it... Uh, I'll be curious to see what kind of differences and improvements there are for Ragnarok, considering I think Ragnarok would have been built on top of this game. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would think so. Um, I've never been that compelled by the mechanical arguments. Uh, but I would have preferred more... This is the thing. This is, this is where I, I guess I agree, but I, I don't categorize it as harshly. I would have preferred more complexity in the um, options for attacks and uh, enemy, yeah. more enemy variety. It's like the, but the thing is, I would always want that more in everything, pretty much. There's never a time where you're like, yeah. I wish there were, there were less enemy types. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> this, uh, that would be weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I noticed too. It was like you, you just you kind of start to keep attacking with the same moves a lot, and it was definitely more in in the first ones. You had a bunch more combinations you could do. Uh, I think the stance always goes to the same attack, no matter where you change the stance. So if you do R one, R one, R one, wait. R1, either the same one as if you would just do R1, wait, R1. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure in the other ones, you had like different kind of moves you did. So it would have been, would have been nice to have a bit more variety. Yeah, no, I so... noticed that greatly this playthrough because I used the stances for the first time properly. And I was like, oh, I, it doesn't even matter when I change the stance. It just does the same one. You're... Unless you do R1 or R2. Your ignorance of the larger action game genre doesn't make the arguments invalid, Mola. Good thing that's not my argument. And I've not mentioned anything about other action games. A lot of, a lot of bitterness in chat, right, guys? You gotta, you gotta calm down. You're gonna have to listen to me and Mel be very kind to this game, because we like it quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I very much so. The funny thing is, like, DMC was mentioned only positively. Like, I don't, I don't Yeah, I love DMC. What are you mad about? Um, You'll be fine, don't worry. We we can be nice to this game, and we can be nice to DMC. Watch me do it. I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah. I haven't played DMC, and I think it's good. How about I that? I should probably play through... I want to play through all of them uh, in the next year. Do a little streaming marathon thingy where I play for them again. It's been a while. 
I want to do like a run through of them at some point. I'll probably ask Theo which ones I'm supposed to avoid. Two. Oh, does everyone hate two? Two is. Mm -hmm. Even I remembered from back in the day, it's like that was a very really weird game and didn't feel like DMC2. Uh, like uh, Devil May Cry. That was, a, that was a special one. But I'll probably play it when I go for all of them because, you know, the completionist inside of mm -hmm. me. But yes, this is. Uh, Mole is lumping <clears throat> all of chat again because of a few dudes. No, I just I just lump all of chat all the time with everything. So don't worry about it. There's some some people in chat are saying some normal things as well. So don't Ooh. worry. If it doesn't apply to you, it's not you. I love you, chat. I'm gonna pat you on the head. Good job. You you go for it. Uh, I really like you if you follow me, chat, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's the main <laughs> platform. Yeah, I do all my streams from Twitter now. Um. Yeah. So this is a what they call a a wolf and cub story. I think that's that's the archetype or the genre where you have mm -hmm. adult character who is often the the a teacher advisor slash they're missing a part of them that's kind of they're missing the funner parts of life, and then the younger character who's wide eyed doesn't know what's going on with the world, but simultaneously provides that that balance or something. And they learn, you know, Last of Us is, is what everyone was comparing this game to when it came out, which I think is pretty funny because the Last of Us mechanics are so much fucking worse, like uh, <laughs> not even close. Um, and that, that's another thing people will call this game like a walking simulator. It's just like God, we've like discussion on games is cringe. <laughs> it's, we were getting, it's getting bad. Do you walk in this game? Yes, a uh, walking simulator. Ugh. Well, because like you'll be holding the log and you're walking at the beginning. And I remember people in chat were like, "Oh my god!" Like the mechanics. Am I, am I right? It's like, God, calm down, Jesus Christ! It's not gonna kill you. I've I've had this discussion with Fringy as well. Like, um, when they have parts of the game where you can only hold forward on the analog stick and you're at like reduced speed. I'm fine with the idea of cutting that out entirely and just making it automatic and you're just watching a cutscene. Yeah, scene. just make it a, just make it a cutscene. Making I'm me push forward on the analog stick seems pointless, but at the same time, I'm not going to fucking write an essay about it. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't last that long, and it's usually filled with dialogue. Yeah. Like, if you're asking me to hold forward on the right... Like, I, I, I'm, I, can, I can do it. I'll put, I'll put up with it. I'm going to find a way somehow. Uh... But yeah, anyway, th th that's the comparison that often gets made, but this is one of my favorite ones of those, because uh, the development between Kratos and Atreus throughout the game is so very steadily, like, built, um, yeah. piece by piece. And you you can even miss portions of it by not going further than the uh, the main story. Yeah, when you complete a... the, uh, the... I think it's... I want to say when you close all the, the tears... Um, mm -hmm. Atreus is like, yay, we did it, like, this is great. And then Kratos, like, gives him some of the biggest praise in, like, the whole game. He's like, you did incredibly well, you've, you've, you've learned so much. And so yeah. and it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, he doesn't usually say stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and if you compare it to the beginning of the game, where he, like, barely talks to him. Doesn't want to. He, these two develop quite well over the, over the course of the whole game. And, um... It's a, it's a, as people put it, it's a father-son story. It's a family story. You can know each other, and uh, you got your big old past coming up in different bits and bobs, and it's just a, it's really well performed, well written, and so it's very satisfying to see alongside. Yeah. Different when they have like the little moments, there's like there's so many small things uh, in in scenes as well, like in the beginning way doesn't even want to really put, put his hand on his shoulder or whatever, and then at the end he just fully embraces him, calls him his son and not boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of things. If you would go, like, through with a, with a comb, you know, comb there's, there's a lot of small things there you can find. Well, yeah, and Kratos is always, like, the, 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 the implementation of um, this, the fight with Boulder... Like, uh, when Boulder threatens to go and get Atreus, that's when, because Kratos is, like, stuck in the wall, that's when you mm -hmm. you first, they introduce Spartan Rage into the actual game. It's like, what a, what a really great decision to yeah. make a mechanic that's super useful and we want to have back, triggered by a story event. And uh, it just tells you that uh, as much as he's... Because you, the first impression you might get is Kratos doesn't care at all about Atreus, but it's like, it comes very quick that he cares more about him than anything. Yeah. 
the Kratos is uh, how he expresses emotion is is very specific, and this has gone over when you're in Alfheim. Uh, Atreus is kind of running out of patience with Kratos because he doesn't he doesn't talk about the the mum that much. He's not expressing himself very much, and he's just like, yeah, I don't. That's not how I do it. Yeah. Uh, some top notch yeah. ex uh, exchanges. Don't mistake my silence for a lack of grief, boy. Yeah. That's such a great scene. He puts him in his place and explains him. He's like, yeah, it's just not how I do it. Like, different people. Good stuff. It is really good stuff. Uh, I mean, I just want to, because we're not going to talk about everything, so we'll probably just jump around. And I mean, the thing I want to talk about that that makes sense. I think a lot of people want to talk about is the uh, the 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 way that they crafted the the moment with good old blades. Oh, is oh. <laughs> the thing is, and this is the thing. Uh, we'll we'll highlight them as we go through in a sec. But there are there are story criticisms, of course. I don't even know if you can you ever going to get away with managing to make a game like this without there being something to say about at least power levels, because there's always. Um, Loopy things going on, but the 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 main idea with the story is you you join up with Kratos and he's got a son now and a and a, a wife slash GF and uh, she just died and I guess the thrust of the drama there is like oh he's gonna have to be the single dad now and he doesn't seem to be very ready for that neither does the kid feel that comfortable with Kratos is like that's what we joined him up as and they got a job of pouring the ashes out on the highest peak in. Uh, all the realms, and you assume it's like this top of this mountain, but it turns out to be Jotunheim, yeah. which is very difficult to get to. And you know, no lie, that's the whole game. The game's story ends when you get to the to top of peak of Jotunheim. Just a lot of stuff happens in, in along the way. And yeah, one of the main causes of drama is that uh, Fey is a giant, Kratos is a god, thus. Atreus is a mortal god giant and uh, he's been lied to his whole life about what he actually is and it's caused conflict within him in a weird fantasy way that makes him very ill and yeah. um, Kratos is only made f more aware of this during this story but uh, this story is about how he's pushed to his limit on whether or not it's worth keeping that secret versus uh, the health of, of his son and eventually he cracks and tells him pretty much everything. And it's it comes at a point as well after a lot in this game of Kratos trying to teach Atreus why you do anything you necessarily do. Mm -hmm. um, which goes against a lot of what Kratos did in the original games. But uh, one of the, the peak moments is, and it's a decent chunk into the game, is Atreus is so ill, he's dying. And so Kratos has got to get something from hell, which is a very cold place. Uh, his frost axe will not cut it. So he needs fiery weapons. And uh, yeah, you know, the Blades of Chaos haven't popped up for the whole game at this point. Uh, and so it was like a... <clears throat> I just think it's a really strong justification for why they would delay it turning up and um, what it can yeah. mean for the story that they are the things that he considers to be like cursed fucking weapons that Ares gave him that killed the people he loved sort of thing, and he's only ever used them for anger, chaos, and destruction. And now he's got to use them to save his new family. It's mm -hmm. beautifully done, storytelling-wise, and to have this moment where he's... Uh, and uh, yeah, all the weather goes to shit whenever Atreus is like super angry or ill, which is interesting. Not mm -hmm. sure what we're going to be concluding on that as it goes on as well. Um, and yeah, uh, Atreus gets... The, the worst damage done when he first activates his uh, his own Spartan Rage, as, uh, as James Yeah, it kind of overloads. He just yeah. kind of goes like, pop! That's when... Mo uh, is it Modi? I always mix up the two guys' name. Because he goes like, oh, I think I broke him. Yeah. Uh, Mola, how on earth haven't you asked why does he have... Why does he still have the blades? Why wouldn't he have the blades? incredibly useful weapons uh the question we asked last time when when i got to the scene is why 
why he would have the Blades of Chaos and not the, not the Blades of Exile. Yeah, no, that's a fair question. We've got the, I think the first, well, the first one's the Blades of Chaos, and then he got the yeah. Blades. Chaos, it, Athena, Blades of and Athena. There was Blades of Olympus at one point at the end of God of War 1, right? Or, uh, was that the beginning of God of War 2? One of them was called the Blades of Olympus, I think, at some point. Yeah. But, yeah, either way, it's... Um, yeah, like the exile bonds, as someone just said in chat, that's those are the ones he throws away at the end of three, and he kind of like drops all the weapons as well when he gets uh, put up. I'm, I'm trying to recall what conclusion we came to, but it was kind of like it's probably more of the maybe more recognizable for people when I say like the blades of chaos uh, instead of the blades of exile. Or maybe for some reason he got them back and those are the ones that he killed his wife with and it's more, it's narratively more fitting maybe, even though it's kind of a question mark how he actually got them. So to clarify, they were called, the name they've got in this game is from the first game, is it? Yeah, yeah. In that case, then we're supposed to conclude, I guess, that when he swapped them out for the Blaze of Athena or whatever, he, the old ones he just put in his pocket or whatever and then... Yeah, and I think the, the Blades of Athena, they got, let me think, I think they got turned into the Blades of Athena, so maybe they turned back or something? I, I don't know. Yeah, that uh, one's a little bit. Apparently in the novel, the Blades just magic back to him in really contrived ways. Oh, oh God, that's, that's, that's not lame. even, why even bother if you're gonna... <laughs> yeah, why <what> bother? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's a fair thing to be curious about because uh well he had a thousand yeah. years right so he probably found a way to get him back i don't know yeah uh, but that's what uh, what we were thinking i was like oh yeah that's actually a good point like why is it the chaos ones chaos and athena completely separate weapons exile is athena upgraded right right you're right yeah, right yeah uh so yeah that's that's what i was thinking uh doesn't devalue the effect of the scene obviously but it's just weird uh, because you would expect it to be the Blades of Exile, you know? Because that's the last one you had. Yeah. Um, getting them back. And uh, the, the way they sorted this all out, it just, uh, as was described, I think, on all three of me, you, and, and Fringy Streams, it's like, man, the respect they're given. Holy shit. Uh huh. And something that Fringy brought up in his stream that I didn't even remember necessarily, but I, I'm starting to feel like I do is. He was saying he didn't understand how people at the time were saying that this game, because he hadn't played it uh, further than a certain point, so he didn't, didn't have much to say on it, but he remembers yeah. there was a sentiment of how this game feels pretentious and embarrassed of its history and tries to avoid it. He, he remembered reading that about what people were saying about this game. Now, pretentious... Let's take. <laughs> is, is, pretentious is one thing. Um, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know what to do with pretentious a lot of the time, because it's such an eye of beholder sort of situation in terms of... Um, what points it like would one not describe god of war 3 as pretentious in terms of what it said about hope like uh, i would have thought so um but at the same mm -hmm. time like i'd be curious what would be considered pretentious in this and whether or not i would necessarily agree i wouldn't know how much it uh, fucks with the game or not but anyway being embarrassed about its history is like nah i think this game loves no. its history they use it very well it's like hinted throughout the game i've been <clears throat> that's something i've been saying since i first played this game and people who haven't played the original games before this have basically confirmed this to me. It's like, they felt the scene was incredibly powerful, even though they had no idea about the backstory, because they kind of hinted it that something was going on in his past. And the way they portray him getting the blades, showing Athena, and it's like, oh, that's going on. So that's probably a character from the past. And then him finishing up with uh after athena i don't know in his brain i guess says like yeah you will always be a monster and then he just walks for us like yeah but i'm not your monster anymore and it's like damn good shit no they i don't think they could have handled that better the, the yeah it's so strong because just the idea of the kratos doesn't believe he'll ever be able to move on from what he did yeah um but he can at least put it to particular uses and that's exactly what's happening in this scene. The Blades of Chaos represent everything horrible about his history, but he can use them to save Atreus. 
Mm -hmm. I just realized because I was playing New Game Plus, my blades look completely different as well. They were like all shiny and stuff. Yeah, the, once you upgrade I, them, I, they become. Super I forgot shiny. how how beat up they were originally. That's that's good stuff. And I think it gets like uh, someone pointed that out to me. It gets Norse uh, engravings when you start upgrading it, which makes sense. I love this shot as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah and people have, were asking, is like, is Athena there, or is it just in his head? Because <clears throat> to be fair, she did exist as this form at one point, at least at the end of God of War 3, and it's like, well, I suppose that's up to the creators of the game, especially with Ragnarok, they can decide now, but I think, yeah. you know, the, the, this is him dealing with stuff. <laughs> that's what, yeah, what was I think it here. works either way. Yeah, yeah, well, it, you're right, I think it could be both, uh, at the same time, even, I don't, I don't even know, the, the, there's a lot going on, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like Joker when people are talking about how much of that happened versus didn't happen in the movie. It's like, uh, at this point, the only thing that really confirms is going to be whatever the sequel ends up saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there was a discussion. I was curious what your thoughts were. Of uh, I remember people, some people in my chat were like, the big missed opportunity here was playing uh, something from the original trilogy music when you fight these guys just outside when you get the Blades of Chaos. What do you think? I, I think the music is perfect. I really didn't like the music here. The reason I think that it was an excellent choice to use the new theme is because of the fact that these are the old games being brought forward into the, the new era, so it deserves to play its own track sort of thing. Like, uh, Yeah. This is, this is something that happens in a lot of what I consider the, the best of like media going forward is when they prove themselves, as in like this game had its own story that was almost separated from the originals, Mm -hmm. in, in a sense, it's like, we're not, we're not going like, look, we have Han Solo, please like our new characters, because he's there. This, this was like, we did everything we could with all the stuff we have, and now we're going to bring in the Blades of Chaos, and we're going to reference a lot more from those other games. Yeah. Um, hopefully you'll you know, trust us to do it sort of thing. And so, yeah, I, I think it makes much more sense to play uh, the track, the main theme of, of, of this game while you're doing this. And yeah. um, uh, something that Fringy said as well in one of his recent playthroughs, and I, I pretty much agree, it's kind of surprising how well they managed to implement the Blades of Chaos into this format of mechanics, you know? That's true, yeah. I don't think I never even th thought about that, but I think it works really well. Did you upgrade it? Did you, did you do, like, a heavy runic play in any of yours? Like, uh, going... Oh, yeah, I've, I've used a lot of runic. Uh, a, I used so when both I... on the Blades and the, and the Axe. Yeah, something started happening, and I was just like, holy shit, what a great benefit. Is when you do, like, the third heavy attack, I think, on the blades, when you have, I think, 200 runic plus, it'll start, like, leaving a puddle of flames behind it that really fucks up enemies. It's great. There's also one that leaves explosions, small ones. It goes like... Yeah, yeah. Which is another cool aspect of the combat that I imagine a lot of people didn't even count or, or, or catch. That depending on what build you have, you'll get benefits in all of your uh, weaponry. Yeah, different pommels give you some uh, abilities on your attacks. Like, they have, like, a moderate activation chance to get, like, a perk or something. Oh, yeah, sorry. The uh, way I just said that sounded retarded. The, 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 depending on your build, it'll change. Like, but it's like, no, what I mean, sorry, is that... <laughs> so you're like, I want lots of runic to improve the damage of my runic attacks. Like, simultaneously, it'll give you bonuses on particular moves in the middle of combos, depending on what right. thing you're upgrading. It's just like, oh, that's cool. And it's, it's all written. It's all there uh, if you want to know what they are. But uh, they're the kind of things you can miss. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, I, I found this. Uh, the, the, yeah, so this is one thing I wanted to mention earlier about the. You could add a bit more dynamism, I guess, to the the thing. I'm surprised there was no uh, move to switch in the middle of a combo between weapons. You'd think mm -hmm. that would be something they would want to put in, like light, light, and then a particular button, and a heavy, and then you switch to the axe and do a heavy slam, and then switch back to the blade and do light, 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 or something. That sounds yeah. like something they totally would have put in. And I don't know if that's going to be in Ragnarok, but it just seems like a really natural thing to put into the game. Yeah, that's something I actually expect them to, to do and just make the, the, the changing of weapons smoother in general. Uh, what else should we talk for, about? For, for a new weapon. new weapon would be cool, like a completely new one. I would, I would very I much enjoy that. I could see that in a, a, for a third, they could. <clears throat> yeah. A uh, surprisingly chunky game. Yeah, that game goes on for a while. I think my first playthrough was like 50 hours long or something. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's really dependent on what kind of exploring you do, because um, yeah. obviously, Mister Mister Fringy will likely have a smaller completion time than myself and Metal, but he's not. I think you and I play games way more similarly than Fringy does. <laughs> Fringy's got his own approach, okay? Yeah, it's funny because I, when I was started my playthrough this time, I was like, I'm just gonna go through it quickly, and then just got distracted again, just went everywhere. <laughs> I just, yeah, I find exploring satisfying. I like because you get so much good dialogue from the characters as well, and you you go around and you Ooh. hear Mimir stories and everything. That's it's something not... I meant to mention actually to the stream because they this is something that happened offline, and I was kind of gutted. But uh, oh. when you're fucking around enough after the story, eventually, I'm assuming you caught this as well. But Mimir says, um, "There's something I need to tell you," and uh, Curtis is like, "Huh?" And he's like, "When you guys went off to do the ashes, um, Freya visited me, and." Curtis is like, what, 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 what happened? And he's like, well, she asked me uh, for, like, advice or directions or whatever on how to get back her warrior spirit. Basically... Oh, no, a, I didn't know that. It's accounting for a bit of a plot hole, of course, being that Freya can't uh, attack another god or something, right? She That's why she lives in the happy place in the woods, because she can't, she can't, like, attack anything. I think Mimia says this at one point in the campaign. Oh. Oh shit! Yeah, because um, I—that's th something I, I started talking about. Like, she's gonna fight us probably, but how is that gonna be? She's probably gonna have to find a way to get back her uh, well, so, ability uh, to fight. We also find out that she was the original Valkyrie Queen, I think. Yeah, and, I know uh, that. Yeah, Odin took her wings and he made it so that she can't attack anything that's living. Um, um okay. and that's why I think if you relook at the final fight in the campaign. She's just she's getting in the way with the the big dude. Yeah, that's what I said as well. Yeah, um, she's, just, she's not really attacking you. She's kind of restrains you, but she's not attacking you to kill. And, and that's so, yeah, not she, her. That's not that's not her intent anyway. Up until you kill Bel Bel Yeah, Gore, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. And so I think the idea is yeah, she's trying to find what she needs to be able to travel through the realms and to be able to attack people again. And judging from the trailers in Ragnarok, she was successful. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's, that's a really interesting piece of dialogue, and it comes well after the story is done. There's a yeah, couple. I don't of think them. I ever got that. I don't think I ever got that piece of dialogue. Funnily enough. Oh, there was so many I didn't get on my uh, first playthrough. I got on this one. Yo, was... The amount of voice lines Mimir has is fucking nuts. I probably still haven't heard all of them. Evidently. <laughs> well, and funnily enough, on my first playthrough, I'm pretty sure I got the one where Kratos does the the tortoise and the hare story, and it's funny as hell his delivery of it. It's so like basic <laughs> yeah. and straightforward in terms of what point he wants to make, um, but I didn't get it on this this run through. Or if I did, I must have missed it because like I I was even surprised when I thought about it. I was like, how did I miss that one? That sounds yeah. like... yeah, I, I got that one in mind. I remember that one. It's pretty funny because it's the, when when he starts telling stories to Atreus and Atreus like you're shit at telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which makes the ending pay off great. Where he talks about uh, yeah, it's like, Atreus. Oh wow, you, fun. you actually told a uh, told a good and story. And me missed it. <laughs> Yeah, and Mimir missed it. My, another favorite one is when Mimir starts a story, and it's because like this story starts in a in a uh, in a sea of blood, and Curtis says, "Ah, finally a story worth hearing." <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think I heard that. That was good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. There's also the uh, when when Mimir finishes a story. Uh, I can't remember what one it was, or an explanation or something. And Mamiya says, like, you know, lots to, to contemplate over. And I think, it, you know, it's like, mm hmm, yeah. It's silent for a little bit. And he goes, anyway, uh, and then he goes to say, then Chris goes, contemplate longer. This <laughs> <laughs> like, is just good shit. Like, uh, the, is, is, uh, could, they, they, have, they have, like, lots of little backs and forths where it's just a little bit more fun is being had between them, even though... Because Mamiya seems to, at first, be, like, he kind of placates whatever's happening, because he's just happy to be out of the tree. Yeah. Um, But eventually he does, like, overstep here and there where he can to just actually have interactions with uh, with Kratos and Atreus. It's nice that he was the one that was pointing out straight away when Atreus goes on his little uh, evil boy arc. But, like... I fucking hate that part. Um, well, you know, we should probably talk about that then, right? That's one of the yeah. criticisms, uh, that he goes too nuts too quickly. The, the yeah. The thing is, there's loads of variables attached that I think make yeah. it a lot more reasonable than any normal assessment of any normal <laughs> character, because he's not... He's not normal. Um, yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay, the, the the thing is, what they were going for with that scene is when he when he figures out, it's like, oh, you're a god, by the way. It's like, oh shit. What they're going for is that he's probably want to do all the things he just kind of got taught by, uh, by Kratos, where 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 they where he just says like, oh, just care about yourself, care about you, not the other ones. Fuck them. But the way they do it with Atreus is just such a. 180 on his behavior. Like I don't it's think not... I agree. Uh, I see. I see a lot of the criticism for that, and I just like when I was going through it, especially this time around. There's there's a few references to Atreus's nature before that happens. Um, the boy is pretty weak in his whole life. This is uh, you. You got to remember, not only revealing the truth does stuff to him in terms of what he's thinking about. It does stuff to him physically. Like, uh, telling him this will start to remove his sickness and start to make him actually stronger. And then you've got the... His, he's very well read. He knows what all the gods have done and can do. One of the first questions he has is, what powers do I have? When you yeah, yeah. kill that troll for the first time in, like, the prologue in the game, he fucking goes nuts. And he's, like, stabbing it over and over again. He's like, you think I'm afraid of you? I fuck you up. Like, uh, he's got what... Uh, the, a portion of him is Kratos from the first three games. And I'm pretty sure that's what they're arguing, is that part of him is getting coaxed out, and that's what Kratos is trying to stop. And is yeah, very that's, aware of. that's the part I, I'm fine with. I'm not fine with how he starts talking to, like, Sindri and stuff all of a sudden, because he likes them. And then there's this one line where he shit talks his mum, and I don't... I don't agree with that one at all. I don't think he would ever do that. Um, I mean, you could you could always chalk it up to he regrets that pretty instantly, uh, especially when it's pointed out harshly by Kratos, and he is a kid, um, and he's drunk on power, and again having physical changes as well. Like that's arguably something he would have said that was not even something he would necessarily agree with, but he's just um, testing his limits, sort of thing. I don't know that. It's it's hard to say it's out of character. I, I would say at that point because it's um, there's so many variables. He's not a normal person. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm fine with that. That they go that way. I just think it goes a bit too quickly. It's like a flip that has been switched as soon as he figures that out. I understand what you're saying, but it is because a flip I, that was switched. Yeah, no, because because what I would have probably done is like they they he learns that and then they he gets to kill, like, a stronger enemy that he's never done alone before with some circumstance. Then he can get, like, have things of grandeur or something. Um, I, the part that gives me pause for thought on this is the fact that mm -hmm. it, uh, it's the, the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. So this isn't something that we usually deal with when we're talking about, like, character writing, that someone is made ill because they're not told... He's like he's like weak partially because of the fact that Kratos won't tell him he's strong. Um, yeah. And so th this is what I mean about the the flip was switch the, the 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 switch was flipped. Sorry. Yeah. Um, that way around. It, th I think I said it wrong. Because I I think because <laughs> you you and everyone else who points that out is is close to on the money, but like that is what's happening in universe. Mm -hmm. Um. I think, the, but but I, I wouldn't disagree with the fact that I would prefer a smoother uh, rising and falling. But the thing that restricted them clearly when they were making this was that they need to get that done relatively quickly so that the normal repeating dialogue for Treyas can go back to normal. Because um, mm -hmm. if you remember, they, they change it for a moment. Instead of being like, you know, uh, oh, I gotta, you know, like... I'm not ready, or shoot that one, or one, two, you know, it's like all that. They've got plenty of normal dialogue for that, but when he's like angry at you and doing his little like, I'm, I'm an awesome god person, he says whatever when you ask him to shoot something. He goes like, yeah, he starts, he starts shooting on his own as well. Um, and it, like, like I think I pointed out in my playthrough, they didn't record much for that section because he says he keeps saying that over and over. Again. Like every time I'm like, shoot this yeah, library, like, he's like, whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. It's like, stop, <laughs> stop doing that. It's cringy. Stop. Um. So yeah, it seems like they wanted to get past that portion relatively quick, but um, yeah. Him being mean to Sindri, I think. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't find it too that far out of it. He, he, we, we at that point have heard them complain about each other 
for a while, and he's he thinks himself he's convinced now that he's better than other people. Um, yeah, this is the, the. I think I would maybe go as far as saying that um the bubbly kind Atreus you see for most of the game isn't everything about him and his nature, and it's kind of the same for Kratos, and you get to see who Atreus is ultimately in a couple of moments throughout the game. Um, even to the point where Atreus doesn't like seeing it when he sees it again in Helheim, if you remember. He's like, that's not me. I can't be me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. I think I'd be curious if Ragnarok is going to give us a bit more context on what is yeah. going on with him um, as a person, because the, you know they didn't throw Loki out for, for no reason. Like, uh, we all associate Loki as trickster god who's an asshole mm -hmm. to a lot of people. And it's like, why would they make him Loki if not to try and point out, like, Atreus has got a got a possible set of futures ahead of him, and Kratos' sort of parentage will likely decide where he ends up. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's... Uh, but I can totally understand why that would be one of the main criticisms. The other one, of course, is the mistletoe. Uh, I think yeah, that's... that one... I think we already talked a bit about that one. Yeah. Kind it's... Of on board that it's pretty weak, the way they did it. If... Uh, if... Ignoring the um, the Freya thing for a second, it's just like the the fact of it alone. Like, there's this material, there's one material in the world that uh, Boulder can be harmed by, and you're like, okay. And it also just happens to be the material that uh, uh, Sindri wants to provide Andrew, yeah. a, a, a Atreus arrows for, and it's it's complete out of the blue. He's just like, by the way, here's some mistletoe arrows, and it's like, uh huh, okay. And then uh, during it's actually, that no, moment, no, think about it. They just say it's like it doesn't even give you like a benefit in the game. I don't think they deal more damage or anything. No, just you just green. get like <laughs> new green arrows. It's like okay, thanks, I guess. And then, so so he does that, and then uh, as as James just pointed out, yeah, Sindri doesn't mention Im an improved version of those or to restock them ever again. He never even brings them up, mm -hmm. like mistletoe arrows in general. That's strange. And then of course. Of all the times in the game, you have mistletoe arrows for what, like a like a like a in, in universe, like a half hour, an hour, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it happens to be the time where a bow strap or or a quiver strap, sorry, gets damaged, and so Kratos uses one of the arrows to fix it. It's just like, damn, if that had happened at any other time, yeah, would have meant there's no mistletoe on that. But then, yeah, to bring Freya back in, she notices the arrows straight away. She recognizes it, presumably from the color uh, at first. Mm -hmm. How else would she know? And then tosses them into the fire and says, never fucking use this demon shit. No, boo. And then um, you have... Uh, she doesn't see it in the in the quiver strap in the many times yeah. that she's very close to... It's very bright green as well. So <laughs> yeah. it's hard and, to miss. And But the other... It's not just that. It's also that if you are Kratos and Atreus and you trust Freya, which they very much do at that point in the story, and she tells you, this stuff is bad juju, throw it in the fire, boo. Yeah, it's like, oh, I have you, some here. I don't want to get cursed. Here, yeah, Kratos that. is the kind Please. of person at that point, and I would say even Atreus, they'd be like, oh, shit, the, the quiver strap has got some in it. We're going to have to replace that with something else. Yeah. They totally do that, but neither of them do it. Um, and neither of them seem to care to ask why... Yeah, just kind of accepted. It's like, oh, okay, again. And of course, they don't feel the need to ask Sindri about it. Why'd you give us cursed arrows, bro? You know, like. And then of course, uh, Sindri, as was mentioned, he, he comments on the strap, but that's about it. Yeah. And uh, him commenting on the strap almost makes it worse because that would absolutely prompt them to be like, oh yeah, about that mistletoe stuff, by the way. <laughs> And now, every, for anybody who doesn't have the context, the whole reason we're bringing all this up is because it facilitates one of the biggest payoffs in the whole game, which is that Boulder is able to be hurt because of uh, mistletoe. And I, I believe in the original Norse, because I was, I was watching some videos go over it, the idea is that um, when she cast this spell or whatever, the one thing, she was getting vows from everything that they would never or can never harm Boulder and that she didn't do it with Mistletoe because she wouldn't have expected Mistletoe to ever be something that's, it's some weird like okay. you know how it goes in terms of just like why would this have happened this way but um, I, I just think that there's a huge opportunity here to have it become a part of the plot line that Mimir has got a spell on him that prevents him from talking about Boulder that you eventually figure out we find a way to release the spell 
he yep, tells us exactly. it's mistletoe. Mistletoe is difficult to find for whatever reason. <clears throat> and uh, you can send us to some part of whatever realm to find it. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what we lose if that was the plot line. Yeah. You know, on top of some other stuff. Because you can fit it in pretty easily on top of everything else we're doing. Absolutely. I've, I've came to the same conclusion in my last playthrough. You could have easily just did it a different way that doesn't make it so dumb. Uh, pretty much the same things you said. Just let's get let's go to Sindri. Give give us more, and then Sindri is like, oh, yeah, well, that's, well, we're the only ones. You have to get them from Flimbersheim and Mistletoe Mountain, and scratch a giant's ball sack and get them off or something. Wait, someone said Faye set it in motion. She knew Mistletoe was needed. Did Faye have anything to do with all the mistletoe stuff? I thought that was just a coincidence. I didn't realize that she would... Are you saying she would have asked Sindri to give you mistletoe arrows, or...? Uh, I don't I know. I mean, that's not the impression I got. Well, I don't... I, you knew Sindri personally? Well, yeah, I know that, but... I don't, I don't think... I think you're stretching it a little bit to have assumed that. Have you got any references outside of she's his friend? <laughs> like, cause yeah, because... Could... Because hmm. hmm. I'm willing to believe it, I just I, I'm looking for a reference, something on the mural, all the way at the end. So th that there was just part of the plan that they get that. Well, stuff like that, I don't even. Are you suggesting she knew that it would end up in his quiver strap and he'd be punched? Because I I don't know. You knew the entire plot. Well, that, see, at that point, then nothing. We're dealing with like a rival or whatever, where everything makes sense because she knew everything was going to happen the exact way that it did or whatever. Just I, I don't buy stuff like that. I don't buy stuff like that for the sake of I want to be able to praise the writing. I don't want to be able to spin it into slosh where it's just like, oh yes, everything happened because Faye knew it would happen this way. Mm. Like fuck that. Um, is an unfortunate part of the writing. That's all I have to say about that one. I wish yeah. it were. I wish it were better. Um, but I love the way they handled the nostalgia. I really enjoy the performances for everybody, including uh, Boulder. By the way, he was a pretty strong bad guy. Oh, yeah. Hell um, yes. I like the development with all the characters. I like the how the relationships change. Be it with Kratos and Freya, Kratos and Atreus, Mimir and everybody, and um. I really do hope that Ragnarok is going to expand on pretty much all of it, mechanically and story-wise. Okay, Molly, you're allowed to be wrong. I'm waiting for a reference. Give me one. <laughs> um, didn't Frey set up the whole journey? Isn't she like prophetic? Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm fine with her uh, giving guidance and stuff. But the idea that she knew everything was going to happen down to every detail, I think that fucks the story completely. You don't want that to be the truth. Like, like, down to literally me doing this with the axe, you know? Which, by the way, I get style points for this. Did you do anything like this, Mel? Anything this cool? Uh, probably. I mean, you fucked it up there, so that wasn't that cool. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, look at that. That should have worked. Uh, oh, wait, why am I looking at the stream? I have to watch together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I try I try things like this because it just it just invites you to do some trick shots. <laughs> Mamiya said Boulder's death happened a hundred years early. You're wrong, Chatter. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. That was that was a cool thing I did. All right, ten ten style points. Um, but yeah, I don't think everything is um in stone in this universe either. Like, I think things can move around. There's a lot of people prophesizing all kinds of things. But um, also. Uh, Someone was just pointing out, you know, every every ledge with yellow on it. Apparently, that's yeah. that's Faye that did that. It's like, no. Yeah, that's kind of what they're implying because the, uh, at the end they go like, "Look, this is Mom's. She's been here." And it's like, uh. Okay. But like, you telling me she went all over Helheim and put painted yeah, it's yellow? Yeah, kind of weird. I don't believe it's, it's this. Really weird. It was all Faye, yeah, she did. She went all over the fucking universe and, and painted yellow for all the places Kratos could climb. Are you kidding me? I think he would have figured that out by himself. Oh, I don't like that at all. I think that's cringe. 
Yeah. I was more than happy for it to just be a coincidental part of all the architecture. Some of it's yellow, and oh, look, that happens to be the stuff you can climb, Kratos. How great is that? I'm fine with the um, the handprints and stuff, but the idea that <laughs> she went to all these realms. She was like, Kratos might need to open this chest for a thousand hack silver in Hellheim. I best put a fucking pathway here. <laughs> Yeah, no. Gotta help where you can, man. Un unless, can. unless it's like one hundred and ten percent solid cannon, I would rather, I would rather assume something else. I just, I just find that a little. Uh... Yeah. Face responds before every yellow in the game. <laughs> <laughs> every bit of yellow <laughs> on the chests, on everything, the armor you get, all of it. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find the end. That's part of the reason I, I adore this game. Uh, what 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 point the story is making overall? I'm looking forward. That's going to be Fringy's next stream. He's likely going to hit the end of the game. Uh, we'll see what he thinks. But um, yeah, one of my favorite parts of anything that happens in this game is when he grabs Boulder. Yeah. Right at the end, it says, uh, "Cycle has to end. We must be better." Yeah, the cycle ends here. Fucking Which bird. is the same thing Zeus told him. And the other go to wars. At what point? When did he say that? Sorry? I think at the end, he, he tells Kratos at some point, the cycle ends now, or something along those lines. I'd have to uh, check it out, because I can't, I can't quite remember. But uh, yeah, I just I feel the weight of the entire history of Kratos behind that line. Like, um, Yeah, absolutely. This man is so fucking tired. Of everything going to shit all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's even a comparison video on YouTube. The cycle ends here when Zeus says it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I didn't just make that up. Good. <laughs> I said that was with, with much confidence on my last stream, and now you made me. Oh, well, I it. just, I just literally had forgotten. <laughs> this is the thing. There's so much to remember, um, and there's a lot of care being given. So there's, there's a lot of stuff to yeah put together, but. Uh, Oh, it's God of War 2, when he kills Kratos. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I love the, um... Like, like he even tries to almost tell Balder, like, believe me, dude, I've done it. It doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't fucking work. Um, yeah, it's good, good stuff. The tag team move with Kratos and Atreus, it's just epic. Yeah, I love this Working final together. fight. Cool. This this feels that, that's the other thing about this fight. I can't understate like it. It really feels like the culmination of the whole game mechanically and uh, storytelling wise. Yeah. Like having it be the boulder is only weak to one of your weapons at a time, sort of thing. It's like ah, it's neat. You didn't have to do that, but you did, and it makes it feel like the Leviathan axe and the Blades of Chaos are working together, sort of thing. Oh, he was really annoying with that on New Game Plus. He changed so much many times. <laughs> so rude. But yeah, it's uh, the fight is good. It's a good fight. He was definitely, it was definitely a, a challenge spike, uh, his fight, because you can't melt him with a laser or any runic attack, really. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a tanky boy. Yeah. But suitably uh, spectacular as well, because of the, the animated giant. Yeah. Poor Freya. A rough time. Um, oh yeah, I'm bringing in Jormungandr to bite the giant. Like, damn. yeah. Pretty cool. Young Gander is just kind of fucked off after uh, after this last scene. He's not in the, in the uh, lakes of nine anymore. I don't know where he went. No, I'm curious what Ragnarok is going to say about what's up with him. Exactly. Yeah. Because <clears throat> uh, I think lengthwise it's looking to be similar to this game, right? Ragnarok. I can hope so. It was interesting it to me because um, if they got nine realms accessible, I would have thought it'd be longer. Mm -hmm. But I'm on board with as long as they want to make it. Hell yeah! Because uh, yeah, there's a lot of allusions in this game to just different like because Tyr is said to be dead in this game, um, but obviously from the trailer, mm -hmm. he's definitely alive. And got got bones to pick with you, probably. Probably he probably knows more about Kratos than most people. Uh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> what now? Uh, uh, from the trailer, I watched very little from the trailer. Oh well, that's that's why I'm strictly only referencing yeah. things. I thought you said you'd seen the trailer. Well, I thought I did. 
Maybe I didn't. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. Well, it's one of the most interesting sort of buy-ins for the game, I think, the fact that mm -hmm. Tyr is, is around, because he's... Um, I can't remember if we've talked about this, but Tyr is the god of war for Norse, or at least as close to it as you can yeah, get. Yeah. And of course... And everyone, everyone really liked him. Uh, yeah, he's like the, the inverse right? of Kratos, which, by the way, I feel like they did a good job of that with Boulder as well. Someone who... Um, he's like the opposite of Kratos, and Kratos is like a ball of feelings, basically. Like, everything is impulse, and he's mm -hmm. been working against that. He's been trying to control that. Meanwhile, Boulder is a character who gets no feelings, and has, it feels like he's living hell and wants everything, like, would do anything to feel something. Um, yeah. It's, it's a cool dynamic to have. And then Tyr, of course, being um, almost an opposite of Kratos in that he used all of his power and influence to try and facilitate peace, and it still yeah. failed. And not only in Norse, like, he, the, he, he was, like, in all the realms. He was at the May, but with the Mayans, with the Egyptians, he was just chilling out with them, apparently. So he, he went around with his, the little stone you, you go grab from the, uh, from the tower. No, you no you use the stone in the tower, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's, there's lots of dialogue potential. Uh, oh, yeah. What else is there in God of War 2018? Fun, fun things. I think they managed to contextualize the world pretty well. Yeah, I think so. Um, um, uh, I like it. With Tia's Temple and the Lake of Nine being sort of the the main hub world and then just the, the realms. And I remember uh, this is something that gets said a lot, but I just think it's really true. The fact that we didn't go to Asgard, we didn't see Odin, and we didn't really see Thor. We see a glimpse of him. Yeah, just all the way at the end. <clears throat> to have done that in a game where you're like... Are... Kratos is going to the Norse mythology. You're not going to see Odin, Thor, or uh, Asgard. It's like, what the hell? Whoa, that's some restraint right there. Yeah, this shows a lot of confidence on their part, too. Absolutely. Just m gets you excited to finally see these places. I think it's uh, it's, it's a pretty good strat, too, because uh, we got so much information about Thor and Odin well before we yeah. met them. And so it'll be enough for them to they can play with. Yeah, that. I got a lot of a lot of stories from Mimir, what things he did. It's going to be interesting to see. Maybe we get to hear like their viewpoint. Yeah, it what, wouldn't surprise me if uh, Odin said like, "How much do you think of what you've been it's... told is true?" Sort of thing. Yeah, because I uh, I get a feeling that there might not be all truths, like a lot of exaggeration and stuff. And there's like reasons where it's because like the, the whole thing with Odin was that he wants to be in control of his fate. And that's why he wants to beat Ragnarok, I think, in the original mythology or something. It seems like they're going for a same-ish approach here, where he starts trying to have everything in, con on, in, in his control so he doesn't die in Ragnarok or something. Uh, at least that's what's been told to me in chat. I don't know shit about Norse mythology, but that's the idea that I got from, from his story. Yeah, there's a lot of people who have at least a, even a vague familiarity with Norse that are trying their best to sort of guess at what the plan's going to be. What, what kind of endings we can expect. <laughs> Here's a question. Do you believe this will be the last God of War game, Ragnarok? No. I don't think I, so. I, I, <laughs> this franchise is too big. I don't think I, can stop I would be of... shocked. I would be shocked. The idea that we've got God of War 1, 2, 3, uh, Ascension, Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, 2018, Ragnarok. The idea that it's like, we're going to stop at Ragnarok. It's like, why the hell would they do that? That doesn't at all line up, I think. The only reason I could see to do it is if the story was to almost demand it, like in terms of how it was written. But yeah. I, mean, I don't know why they would write it that way. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um... Uh, there's the one theory of like, well, maybe Kratos dies and Atreus takes over and he goes to Egypt and stuff. And it's just like, I don't know, I don't know what God of War is without Kratos. Um, yeah, you, you, you probably want to call it a different something. It's, I don't know, a God of War story or something. I don't know. It's, it would be weird. It would be very weird. Because uh, Atreus is not the God of War. That's just, it's just not him. He has a very different persona. Child of War, Son of War, Boy of War. Yeah, this is the thing. Uh, don't exactly know. And that's where I'm, uh, I'm quite happy to not know. Same for Metal, I imagine. Absolutely. It'll be 
going through this without knowing at all where exactly it's going to go. Bun on the bun. But yes, uh, obviously by the end of 2018, Freya kind of hates you, wants you to die. Odin and Thor, uh, well, Thor's going to want to kill you because of what you did to his son slash an annoyance that you've been. Odin mm -hmm. will be very curious about you, probably wants to kill you as well. But also they've been in invested in getting at Atreus. That's what this game is about, actually, wasn't it? Like, Alder was sent to retrieve him. Yeah. We'll probably find out more about that, too. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, one of the things I want to do is visit Asgard. Gimme. Yeah. Um, I suppose that's, that's, the, that's the franchise up to now, at least how we feel about it. Um, it's yeah. been fun. It's been good. Love an overall it. great little experience. I'm very happy with God of War as a, a from choice, an IP. Absolutely. I'm super happy to play whatever they got next. Yeah, don't fuck me. Don't fuck me, okay? True. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to read whatever messages we got, and then we'll probably wrap up because the game is out in seven minutes. Oh, good. I can't wait to not play it yet because I don't have it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I thing. I'm going to be going to sleep soon, so... Be tomorrow afternoon, I'll start it up. I'll yeah, maybe I'll, I'll probably test it out by then and make sure it's all working. Oh, it's gonna be probably need to be careful tomorrow on Twitter. Maybe I don't know. This one says God of Boys. Mm. Cool, true, yeah. I love how YouTube has been putting Ragnarok spoilers at the top of my recommended all week because I watched your God of War streams and Ragnarok trailers. That's totally not infuriating at all. It's not even just that, it'll just be the viral videos now. It's, it's mm -hmm. a cool new thing right now. There'll be people who are getting Ragnarok spoiled who don't even know what God of War is. <laughs> Hi Probably, yeah. But yeah, it does suck. That's YouTube for you. Um, I hope you remember me. I expect my baby boy in November and said that he might come early. Well, we have a Team Halloween now. He was born uh, the 27th of October at 3.16 a.m. Jack came into this world healthy in a cute bundle. Well, that's excellent news. Hey, congrats, um, man. That sounds great. October babies are great. I did mention this. He'll be, uh, he'll be fine, hundred percent. Gonna have a great life, and um, yeah, very happy for you. Congratulations! That's all. Uh, whoever streams Ragnarok first gets my fleems. I'm afraid you're gonna be seeing me, Metal, and Fringy streaming Ragnarok. Though, what's funny is Fringy's gonna be streaming. I think the day Ragnarok releases, he's gonna be streaming the end of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be like, "Yeah, that was great." Everyone's like, "Play Ragnarok, idiot!" Dude, no, fool. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be, I'll be on that ASAP. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's it's probably gonna come come early tomorrow, and it's gonna be lying here, and I can't start playing. I'm gonna have to look at it. It's like mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you to look at. Uh, will you ever have a chat with Under the Mayo? He has a very contentious video on 2018. Would be fun. I'm not against the idea. I don't. I haven't seen the video. That might be one of the ones I was referencing earlier. I'm not. Hmm. Not all gods are the same, Atreus. Norse gods are pretty gay, Greek gods turbo gay, Abrahamic gods more <laughs> stone the gay away kind of vibes. The Flash gets quote. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, the Athena PC you aspire against. So yeah, <laughs> just... <laughs> God, you have no idea how applicable that is to me these days right now. Yeah. Uh, the death of the PC means the death of us all. Then prepare your death, long man. Love you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, also a great quote. Uh, can't get past 2018's snooze fest gameplay, but I'm sure the cutscenes of oh. Ragnarok will be fun to watch on YouTube. Love how they adapted the Norse lore, though. I, I this is the thing. If, if people who find it snore worthy, I uh, I just yeah, can't, something I can't you can relate. do about it. <laughs> I can't relate. I don't know what to say. Fair enough. Yeah. Whoever designed the spike room puzzle deserves a kick in the balls. Uh, yeah, God of War 1. I still love God of War 1, but the platforming can be very frustrating. Hope Ragnarok rocks. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah fully agreed. Uh, have you seen Matthew Matosis' God of War 18 video? I did when it came out. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I can't really say much about it, but... Uh, yeah, I got nothing. Always enjoy his opinion. He's a uh, he's very well-delivered game-man. I like him a lot. Kratos holds power of time itself, and he chooses revenge instead of saving Sparta or his family. Is that even in character? He's not an idiot. 
this is the thing. I I don't think there's any way of writing your way around that. Um, you you yeah. might be able to go like Kratos goes. I'm gonna go back to save my family, and then the fates are like, that's too far in the past. You can't do that, lol, or <laughs> something. And be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Okay. But I mean, they kind of uh... wiped that out when he went and saved the Titans from the war. So yeah, yeah, he could have he could have done it easily. But he forgot. We might as well go back in time and kill the gods when they're babies or whatever. <laughs> Just like, oh no. Make things easier for you, I don't know. Baby Zeus. I got so angry at the Ares fight I ripped my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that happening. <laughs> Damn it. Pet <laughs> uh, annoyance, Cyclone of Chaos being interrupted. Is that something that can happen? And I'm trying to think, because like, what usually happens is it keeps going but you can take loads of damage and then die. Mm -hmm. Um, what game can it be interrupted in? And, and if you mean interrupted in the form of death, I, I don't really mind that, but I agree with you, I'd find it annoying if it can be interrupted in general. I remember thinking that Cyclone of Chaos didn't, I don't think it did enough damage in uh, 2018. Yeah, I didn't, I tried it once and I was like, that's pretty bad. I was using it almost out of nostalgia. I was, uh, but like, I eventually I was just like, I can't keep using this, it's just not good enough. Yeah. I used to um, grapple uh, a bunch that dealt a fuck ton of damage. Uh, max upgrade Thor hammer, raw scepter, Jesus hammer. <laughs> okay. Get off. Zeus is fighting the Titans now. We can defeat him, but not in this time. Why the fuck not, Kratos? That's actually a good point. If Kratos just fucking attacked Zeus in Tartarus, <laughs> he probably would have killed him. Yeah. And all the Titans die anyway. And the Titans had nothing to do with why Kratos won in God of War 3. They had nothing to do. In fact, they no. only got in the way. <laughs> like, they were just, they were just shite. This is a very strange narrative. Ooh, find love in your city. Oh, my, oh, my one? No. Oh, oh, damn it. Kratos makes everyone his little clown boy. Yep. That is true. Uh, never noticed this before, but Hades is drawing in souls into himself from the river Styx in his last phase. I don't think I picked up on that. That's cool. Wait, what was that? Uh, in his last phase, souls going into Hades from the river Styx. Oh, into Hades. Okay. God, Sorry. that fight is so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if anybody was wondering, mechanically, God of War 3 is top dog, I think, out of the, the collection. But story, yeah. I don't even know why... Anyone would need to say this, but story is God of War 2018. It's not even close. Be interesting to see if Ragnarok or 2018 are better for story. Yeah, it'd be interesting. A lot of people expecting Ragnarok to be shit in that department. I'm very, I'm, I'm just curious now to see what's going to happen because it's a afraid of sequelitis. I, um, which I is think. fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have that in the back of my brain as well, but I'm just, I'm just gonna, just gonna let it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thor might not be the most controversial god in five. Ooh, all right. When yeah, you say maybe. controversial, do you just mean like mean, <laughs> or I don't or know? From oh, in terms of how they, they portrayed, look? it could be that. Yeah. <clears throat> I prefer the OST in God of War three over God of War twenty eighteen. More memorable. I adore them both. I think I prefer twenty eighteen actually. I'm I'm I really like Bear McCrary. He does some cool music. And he did Rings of Power, but that's just... <laughs> it feels know. like everyone's got to mention that now. Like, yes, he did Rings of Power. I'm sorry about that. A friend of mine still likes the soundtrack because he's a, he's a big Ben McCrary fan. I, I'm too normally, but I've, I found it, found it to be fine mm -hmm. in some parts, the Rings of Power. I don't think, I don't think it compares to what he's done before. Kratos, A New Hope. Um, I don't think that's Athena. It might be Chaos. Oh, Blades of Athena versus Blades of Chaos, I'm guessing is what they're saying. Mm. If you guys recall, in the 90s, there was a <laughs> Sam Raimi-produced syndicate series called Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. Kevin Sorbo played Hercules. That's who voiced Hercules in God of War 3. Really? It's mm. awesome. I didn't realize Kevin Sorbo did the voice of him in that game. It's neat. Uh, when you two doing the other God of War series, hint, hint. Oh, Gears of War. I guess is what they're saying. That's hilarious that they would ask. Them. Oh, yeah. Funny you asked that today. <laughs> um, literally today, I was in my local town. I was in a, a tech shop. 
that had old stuff in it, and I was just curiously looking, and I saw an Xbox 360. That I don't, I don't have one of them anymore. And I was like, there are some games I want to play on Xbox 360 that I'm pretty sure aren't on anything else. So I should probably grab it, because it's cheap, and, and whatever, I, I, I wouldn't mind having one of all the consoles I used to have sort of thing, maybe, as a collector's thing. And I looked at their game section, and I scanned through all of them, and I didn't really want any of them that either I could get on something else, or just didn't want them in general. Except, I saw God of War, uh, sorry, Gears of War 1, 2, and 3. And I was like, hmm, maybe... If I get all that set up, me and Mel could play them in co-op when he comes over. <laughs> um, because I know that that's a way to... Because I'm not even sure how you do it on PC at this point. Uh, so it's, it's just really funny that you'd ask that question now of all times when that was floated today as a possibility. Yeah. So yeah. And, you, because, and I said to you that just a couple of weeks back I talked about the games because someone asked me about them. I was like, I would like to play them at some point. <laughs> hey, it'll be so, fun yeah. on the burn. Good stuff. There's like two of them on Game Pass, I think. Uh, I think it's Gears 5 and another one. Some remaster, I think. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, it's very fun watching Fringy Experience God of War 2018. Yeah, it is. It's funny. It's a very different run through compared to myself or even Mel. Why it's fun watching people play games. Yeah. Soma oh. next, Fringy. Soma, do it, coward. He keeps saying, like, well, I ran out of time this year because, you know, it's the end of Halloween. I was like, don't have to wait until fucking Halloween to play it. <laughs> you can play whatever yeah. you want. You bastard. By the way, <laughs> as real, someone mentioned that to me, I think on my last stream or something. Uh, the the two times I've seen all of Soma was one my own playthrough where I was sick, and then I watched your playthrough because I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna do to you, association likewise. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but poor Bear McCreary from God of War twenty eighteen OST to Rings of Power OST. Well, he, then he went back <laughs> over to Ragnarok OST, right? I'm assuming he, is he doing the music for that or is he not? Uh, I've I've been just assuming he is he is. I assume he is, yeah. yeah. It, it, it. Atreus truly surprised. Now he gonna have an annoying kid running around. I thought I would hate him. No, he's one of the best companions ever. As companions go, I I really like having Atreus there compared to yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Um, impatiently waiting for Ragnarok launch. So even happier to see this chatting. It was great watching the playthroughs. Cheers to you both. Hope everyone enjoys the next chapter of the series. Yeah, same. I, I, I hope this is a bad yeah. be. Glad you enjoyed the playthroughs. Metal, in brackets, fun. coward, refused to fight the Valkyrie Queen. Wow. It didn't have time this time. Sorry. Didn't have time, huh? I didn't. I had to coof, and then I had to do a nine-hour stream to get back on track. Shame him. Shame him. I'm sorry. I did it before. It's in the archives. Go watch it. There's a lot of salt at the Valkyrie Queen. <laughs> I Molly, you savage beast. Keep up the great work and invite me to EFAP sometime. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And uh, who knows? <laughs> Anything could happen. There, are people are shaming you. Good. Boy telling Kratos' his story is good in the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, saying he told a good story. Yeah. And Mimir missed it. That's like the best part of it. <laughs> also, the blades were wrapped in his old cloth. Yeah. Um, yep. His, uh, his toga. What? I saw someone referred to it as. Gears 1 remaster, Gears 4, and Gears 5 all have online co op on Game Pass. Oh, okay. Uh, once he finds put he's a god, he misinterprets Kratos' lessons as I'm a god, I'm better than everyone. That's why you're so cold, right, Dad? He um he does uh, talk a little bit about how he's misunderstood Kratos a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. as a god, you can do whatever you want sort of thing. There are consequences to killing a god. Oh, I love that part so much. Mm -hmm. Maybe Freya should have simply acted interested in the arrows and pretended to want them and then offered to trade her arrows for them. Would have been subtle. There's, mm. there's a lot of things we could have done to fix it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Could you believe? Uh, could y'all believe that the music composer for this game is the same who made the Rings of Power <laughs> Pyroclasm? Rings of Pyroclasm. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's strange because uh, I just really didn't feel affected by Rings of Power's tracks basically at all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just weird because like the the soundtrack in Ragnarok was uh, sorry in 2018 was uh, very effective. She painted in uh, Helheim after she got there after dying. <laughs> so like she dies and then goes there. It's like gotta do this shit quick. Oh. Nothing better to do. Valkyries are gone, so I'm just chilling here anyway. Yeah, make some yellow lines. <laughs> Have a shot on, Morley. Your playthrough of all the games made me do the same. As someone who never played the original, I almost broke my control. Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, it. would have facilitated that, but hopefully you had fun. Yeah. Uh, he repeats a lot of the lines that Curtis said in the earlier games. Is that a thing? Sorry. Does Atreus, in that moment of the story, say a couple of things that Kratos has said in other games? Cause... Uh, I don't know. Maybe. He does... <laughs> there are consequences to killing a god. Now excuse me while I kill Boulder and cause Ragnarok. He doesn't want to kill Boulder. Doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. Let's him just walk away, and he'll be fine. Kratos dies and respawns. I have died before. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's so fucking sure stupid. Rise of Skywalker, man. What a movie. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mola, where can I find links to your God of War 2018 streams? I didn't get any YouTube notifications for any of them after three for some reason. Go to my YouTube homepage, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see the full playlist is there for all the gaming stuff. Be able to crack on with any of them. No, no, I'm talking about the Green Ghost. Wait a second. Box. So about Athena, I don't think that's Athena, it might be Chaos. Is Chaos a reference to like a particular person in Greek mythology or even Norse or I'm assuming maybe? Because like I said, they might develop that in, in Ragnarok. It might be that we find out mm -hmm. what's going on there more so than what we were given. Can't wait for God of War Ragnarok. In the meantime, I've been reading A Song of Ice and Fire halfway through Clash of Kings. I bought the Folio Society versions, pricey but amazing. Well, hope you're enjoying them. <clears throat> Cute. Fun way to spend some time. One to ten, where does the entire story rank? Like across the entire series? Ooh, that's like, hmm. Mm. That's interesting. It's gonna knock it down quite a bit with the original trilogy. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I'm just gonna annoy everybody by saying this, but like, one, two, and three, bad. Like, the story is silly yeah, and, and goofy. And very nonsense. silly. Um, and then there are problems in in 2018 that go well beyond the stuff that we were talking about. Like just the the power level stuff is kind of annoying. You'll, yeah, you'll never know just how powerful any character really is, be it in a cutscene or in game. It's just never clear, and you can die at any point depending on what the plot really wants. Yeah. Uh, and then you have him having trouble opening some doors or something, or getting overwhelmed by. I mean, Kratos specifically, getting overwhelmed by some random human guy, which is just like, I don't know, you just gotta flick him away. Well, do you remember, uh, was it Modi who, um, like, electrocutes Kratos and keeps him stunned for, like, a good two minutes at one point? It's, uh, yeah. He gets out of it with rage, I think, but it, it does kind mm -hmm. of feel when he does that, you're like, oh, that's something that can happen? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they get to play around a little bit with, like, context release... Like you try and head cannon some stuff, but yeah, I just think that there's a lot of plot like that that gets in the way. But overall, if you were to ask me, what does it average out for one, two, three, four? I probably like, I don't know, man, like four. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah. I, I even think I'm being generous at that point. But if we cut out the originals and just go with 2018, it's probably like it's it's because like the character work is excellent with some hiccups, mm -hmm. the plot. Has a decent chunk of issues, but also plenty of praise. The will building is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. And then thematically, it's it's rock solid, I would say. So, probably like a seven. Yeah, I would go with a seven. Um, but then, like, on personal themes, like, I just, I love the whole franchise to, to a very yeah. high degree. Like, like, quite a bit. I mean, I think I said at the beginning, but Go to War is just straight up my favorite franchise. Like, every time I replay it, I just fucking love it. Every it's, time. Real fun. It's real yeah. fucking fun. And, uh, yeah, depending on how Ragnarok goes, we might have an EFAP episode for it. 
Don't know. Talk Probably want to do something for a forge as well. I don't know, but I don't know how to do that yet. I don't know. We have to have a super chat. Love you guys. Mubes, are you playing Ragnarok tonight? Friendly PSA. DM G O W is easier in Rag and can tug different down from it, but not up to it. I'm not even sure that that is. DM G O W. Uh, give me God of War. This is the the hardest difficulty oh. in 2018. And apparently, and if I understood it correctly, you can change it down, but not up. <clears throat> I'm 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 gonna go for the one below that. I mean, yeah, I, I think I, I'll I, go for hard immediately. This is how I'd, rather, let you. I'd like to approach all games. I'm happy to go above normal because <laughs> me and Mel are kind of kind of pro gamers. Uh, yeah, kind of, I'm I'm a gamer. Yeah, pretty pro. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gaming. A, I'm a gamer. We're not like some green plague doctory type person who Oof. is like, oh, I just play on the pansy mode where we get to flutter around. And look, at the, <laughs> look at the flowers. And refuse to kill the crows. Look at the crows. I'm not gonna <laughs> touch them. They're not evil. It's like ah. Uh... We, uh, yeah, we, we want to be doing that. <laughs> we want to we want to be jumping into that hard mode, okay? But, you know, I, I'll be considering doing uh, Give Me God of War, depending on how it goes at mm -hmm. another time, you know? Boop, 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 boop. Um, but, yeah, I'm not playing it tonight, no. I'll be playing it in, theoretically, like, 16 hours or something like that. At the end of God of War 2018, Kratos would have killed a god either way, Faye through an action... Or Boulder via his snapped neck. They, I think they mean Fre Freya through an action. The Kratos the trolley problem. Neck. Well, yeah, because Kratos, the cycle ends here, and he's, he's deciding that Freya is more worth being alive than Boulder. That's pretty much what his decision is there. Yeah. <laughs> he's, you know, he's probably right, but the problem is that it makes her a little bit mad about stuff. As, as you do. Um. Anyway... That that about that about does it. Me and me and Yay. Mel are gonna get out of here. I need to go Hell to yeah. sleep so that I have enough energy tomorrow yeah, me to too. actually stream <laughs> for you guys and play a video game. It's gonna be fun on the bun. You're gonna be ahead of me because you probably out stream me tomorrow. I can imagine. Well, to be fair, to... I'm probably gonna go ham on streaming Wednesday and Thursday because they're the only days I got free this week. Oh, uh, okay. And then I gotta wait until Sunday until I can stream again. That's gonna be so yep. sad. <laughs> I would have had all week, but then we were like, Hey, you want to do EFAB? I got to do Friday Night Tights and EFAB. Well, I, that sounds like a you problem. The depressed one, okay? Everyone, uh, the fucking people are going to be like,